My name is Marianne Cano, C A N O. Is that too loud? <laughs> Yes, yes. Um, are you related to uh, Lyle and Eric Rodriguez? Yes, I am. And uh, what is your relationship to them? I'm first cousin. <clears throat> and who are your parents? Marta Cano and <clears throat> Peter Cano. If you look to your right, Ms. Cano, you'll see we have uh, a family tree showing. Can you see what's written on it? Yes. And do you see um, your parents' names? Yes. And do you see yourself? Yes. And are you here? Correct. So you're the third child of Marta and Peter Kahn. That's correct. And what's your date of birth, Ms. Kahn? 3964. So that would make you four years older than Lyle and seven years older than Eric, is that right? Yes. Now, when you were a young child, where did your parents live? In Puerto Rico. And at some point, did your family move to New Jersey, the Princeton area? Yes. And what year was that? 1979. And when your family moved to the Princeton area in 1979, were you then living relatively close to Eric and Lyle? Yes, we were. Before your family moved to Princeton in 1979, had you seen Eric and Lyle periodically over the years? Yes. Did you get to see more of them after the family moved to New Jersey? Yes. On what sorts of occasions would you get to see Eric and Lyle? Attention Vegas to when? When you moved to New Jersey, when, after you moved to New Jersey. Um, family gatherings, Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthdays, Mother's Day, Father's Day. We pretty so, much had a reunion for every occasion, really. Okay. You have to speak up a little bit. It's just can this go up a little? Or we'll move that microphone. If, yeah, it's uh, a little bit too low for me. Okay. That's this witness is very soft spoken. Just speak up if you can. Is okay. that better? Yeah, that's better. That's better. So it would be for all sorts of holidays and birthdays and Mother's Day and Father's Day? Yes. And what would be the usual gathering place for the family? It was at my Aunt Terry's house, usually. And that's uh, Terry and Carlos Baralt? Yes. And Terry Baralt is your mother's sister? Yes. And did Terry and Carlos Baralt have children as well? Yes. And they had four girls? Yes. Yes? Yes. <laughs> So you would ordinarily, ordinarily, the family would gather at their home? Yes. And did uh, Jose and Kitty Menendez and their two boys join these family gatherings? Yes, they did. Now, I want to focus your attention on that period of time um, from 1979 to 1982, OK? In 1982, did you start college? Yes, I did. And so were you away from the family more? Yes, I was. So let's focus to that period before you started college. When you would uh, see the Menendez family, Jose and Kitty and their two boys at these family gatherings, okay? Can you first tell us what um, your impression was, what you saw by way of interaction between Jose and Kitty? Interaction um, irrelevant. Be more specific as to what you're asking. Okay. Did you see the way Jose and Kitty treated each other, talked to each other, acted towards each other at these gatherings when their children were present? Yes. And could you describe what you saw? It was um, very impersonal. There was very little um, display of affection between them in a way that they did not appear to be a couple to me. And was that uh, different from what you were seeing with the other members of the family, the other married couples? Yes. Now, at this time, were your parents separated? Yes, they were. Yeah, but before their separation, did your parents act more like a couple than what you saw with Jose and Kitty? Action irrelevant to cost or speculation. Sustain. Now, when the, the boys, Eric and Lyle, um, when you saw them at these family gatherings between 1979 and 1982, did they behave differently than the other children of the family? Yes. 
Objection sustained. The answer is stricken. Well, Your Honor, I'm get, that was just foundational. To well, let's get, get to it then. Okay. How did Lyle and Eric behave at these family gatherings at your Aunt Terry's house? The world. They were um, very undisciplined to my eyes, um, wild, um, hyperactive. Okay. Describe what they did. They would run around um, all the time. Always mm. running? Yes. Always in motion? Yes. Now, did, were they aggressive towards people at all? No. Did they ever spit or bite or hit or punch or do any of those things? No. Were they ever fresh or talk back to people at all? No. So they just moved all the time? Yes. Now, were there occasional family gatherings at their house? Um, not at the time. Not during those years? Not during those years. And would it be fair to say then the only time you really observed their behavior was when they're at someone else's house? Yes. Now, did anybody, uh, well, strike that, did either of their parents uh, ever say anything to them about their running around behavior? Um, occasionally, my uncle would. And when your uncle would say something about it, what did the boys do? They would stop. Uh, and would it take any arguments or any repetition on his part for them to stop? No, it didn't. Tell me how it would happen. Overall. Um, well, they would be running, running around and for a long time before somebody would respond and eventually my uncle would either just raise his hand or just call their name and they would stop what they were doing immediately. Yeah. And by your uncle, you do mean their father, Jose Menendez? Yes, correct. Did, uh, did other people in the family try to stop their running around? Um, well, we did sometimes. We being who? Uh, the cousins. The older cousins? The girl, uh, we're all female cousins for the most part. Okay. We'd be trying to play cards or whatever we were doing. We would try to get them to calm down. Okay. And did they calm down when you talked to them? No. And did you ever see your Aunt Kitty trying to calm them down or stop them? I, I did not. Did you ever see any other adult in the family try to say something to them and have your Uncle Jose stop the adult? Yes. What did you see in that regard? Um, well, occasionally, I, one of either my Aunt Terry usually was the one who would, would say something to them, and my uncle would say, let, let them be, they need to, you know, they need to be boys. You they don't need, know. They need to be boys, he said. Right. And mm. would the other adults and, and some of the other cousins complain to Jose and Kitty about the boys' uh, hyperactive behavior? That's an irrelevant. It's foundational, right? Objection sustained. Well, did you ever, what was it, how would your uncle Jose respond if any of the other adults or any of the cousins complained about the fact that his boys were running through the house? Section Sustained. Did he laugh at this behavior? Did you see your uncle laugh at this behavior of the boys? He seemed to feel it was normal behavior for them and thought it was funny most of the time, yes. Were you able to get to know Lyle or Eric during these years, 79 to 82? No. Why? Um, I'll Sustain. Make, well, I'd like to be heard. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase it another way. All Did right. you get to be close to them at all? To be no. friendly with them, to be able to talk to them, to have a relationship with them, to show them affection, any of those things during these years? Yeah. Overall. It, it was very hard to get to know my cousins. It was... Um, All right, the question is, did you or did you not get to know them in the context of the question that was asked? I did not get to know them in any of those... Ways? Ways. Why? Sustain. Your Honor, I'd like to be heard in this... Did you see if any of the other girl cousins like yourself um, had any greater success in approaching or getting to know the, the boys? No. You didn't see it or they what didn't? Is your no. What Did, do you mean by that? 
I did not see any of my other female cousins get to know my cousins any better. Okay. Now, do you have a younger brother named and Andy? Yes. At some point, did, they, did it appear that Eric and Andy had formed a, a friendship? During what time period? Well, I'm not spe specifying, but was there a time period when that did happen? Yes. And do you recall what time period that was? Um, it was after I was in college. Okay. Now, after you went to college, did you still join in some of the family gatherings? Yes, I did. Was that slightly less frequently than before? Yes, it was. And during that period of time, 1982 to 1986, did you again observe Eric and Lyle at these gatherings? Yes. And was there any change in their behavior during that period? Yes, it w there was. Would you tell us what they were like during that later period of time, 82 to 86? Um, they were... Well, and were they different from each other during this period also? Yes, they were different from each other also. Okay. Then why don't you first describe how Lyle behaved at these family gatherings from 82 through 86? Lyle was um, the more social. He would, um, we could actually converse with him for the first time, really. I had never really had a conversation with either one of them. So I could actually, Lyle would actually ask me how school was, how my athletics were, could actually converse with him. He showed an so, interest in what you were doing? Yes, he did. I take it he wasn't running around the house anymore? No, he wasn't running around the house anymore. Okay. Was he mannered, well-mannered, civil, polite? Yes, he was. And what about Eric? What was Eric like um, at these family gatherings from 82 through 86? Eric um, was still very difficult to hug. They were very both difficult to hug throughout, but at this time, Lyle was, in Latin families, we tend to say hello with a hug and a kiss on the cheek, and it was, um, with Eric, it was very difficult. He was, it seemed like he had a hard time receiving affection. Did he have a hard time receiving physical touching? Is, did you notice that? Um, yeah. When they, were, when they were younger, during the 79 through 82 period, did you also notice that both of them would pull away from hugs? Yes. Uh, did both of them at that time seem to be having difficulty receiving affection? Yes. Objection sustained. The answer is stricken. Tell us what they did when they were younger when someone tried to hug them. They would pull away and stay very stiff. Like the, cringe? Uh, I don't know what cringe means. It just they would just stay very stiff and not reciprocate any affection. I mean, it was almost very uncomfortable to even try to hug them because it was a stiff lug which you were hugging. Okay. They didn't they didn't show any hostility. They didn't try to brush you away or anything. They just closed. They just stay themselves. stiff. It was it was not received. And in the later years you, you found that Eric still had that reaction to your attempts to hug yes. him? Yes. <coughs> Overall the answer will stand. And what about, um, as compared to Lyle, who was making social conversation, would Eric do that in the later years? No, he didn't. What did he do at these gatherings? Um, I didn't see him interact very much with anyone. Um, if anyone, it, would, it was with my younger brother, Andy. So that's the only person in the family you saw him interact with? Yes. Um, would you try to talk to Eric, ask him questions, start a conversation? Overall. Yes, I would try. I would try to, but it, it was clear that after a few monosyllables as answers, that I wasn't going to get very far to get to know him. Um, he was silent. Yes. Was he being hostile or unfriendly, or just silent? Quiet. Reserved. Now, in, during these later years, um, 82 through 86, when you'd be at these family gatherings, was the attendance of the Menendez family, uh, Jose and Kitty and the two boys, different than what it had been in the earlier period? Um, yes. And would you tell us what was different? Um, as a 
general statement, they, they tended to be the last ones to arrive, the first ones to leave, and many times um, one or the other of my cousins were, was not present or one or the other of my aunt an un or uncle were not present. So sometimes only one parent would show up and both boys wouldn't be there? And, yes. And did you know where the boys were, where the other uh, parent was? Sister. And when you say they were the last to show up and the first to leave, did they stay very long at these gatherings during the years 82 to 86? Overall. They, it seemed like they, they would stay least time than anyone else. They would just get there last minute prior to when we would start eating almost and leave as soon as we were done. So it was so there in was, and out. So there was no time to socialize or to get to know them? Correct. And how would the uh, departures from these family gatherings come about? Did some, was there some member of the family who would decide it was time to leave and signal the rest? Yes. And who was that? It was my uncle. You have to use his name. You have a number of uncles that are at these gatherings. It was Uncle Jose. And what would he do? Overall. Um, he would either snap his fingers, okay, Lyle, Eric, Kitty, let's go. I mean, that was it. That was it. Now, in 1986, uh, that spring or early summer, did your mother and the rest of your family move to Florida? Yes, some members of my family. And uh, did you remain in the Princeton area uh, for that summer? Yes, I did. And where did you live starting in June of 1986? I lived with my aunt and uncle, Kitty and Jose, and, and Eric and Lyle. And at that time, let me get the house truck. At that time, what house were they living in? They were living in the Princeton house. The one on Mountain Avenue? Yes. <coughs> This probably won't work for very long, but that's this house here. Yeah. Okay. Is that a large house? Very large. And what was the physical setting of it? How did you get to that house from the street, say? There was um, a gate, but not a guard gate, a gate that you would unlock yourself. That wasn't locked. You would just lift a handle and go in and get back in your car and you drove about a quarter of a mile or so. It was a long ways from the street. It was a private road? Yes. It just led to that house? Only to the house. And did you have any idea how you were going to get there? It was woods. It was kind of scary. It's it's scary? A, it, to me, it was. And and so you drove a quarter of a mile and then you got to this house which was all by itself in the woods. Mm -hmm. it? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. And when you stayed at that house, um, was this the first time that you had ever stayed with uh, uh, Jose and Kitty Menendez and their children? Yes, it was the first time. <laughs> now, were you able when you were living with them? Uh, how, how long did you stay there? I stayed from about the end of um, June through August, mid-August or so. And originally, had you planned to stay longer? Uh, yes, I had. And did you leave early? Yes. Why did you leave early? I was very uncomfortable in the house. Were you uncomfortable with the house, or were you uncomfortable with the people in the house? I was uncomfortable all around with the house and with my feelings of the people in the house. While you were living in the house, um, you have described before that at family gatherings you'd see 
Jose and Kitty Menendez, you saw no affection and no interaction. Um, did you see anything different? I, I saw no affection between any family members. And how did uh, Jose treat Kitty in front of his children that you observed while you were living with him? I saw a lot of mocking and making fun of on Kitty. Well, was this good-natured, light-hearted, mocking and making fun? Or was it something else? I don't know what you mean by well, good was it just? joking or was it sarcastic? Was it hurtful? It was hurtful. I would see tears in my aunt's eyes every so often. And how often did this mocking uh, behavior by Jose go on? I, I saw it constantly. Every day? Yes. Was that, did you see any other way, in fact, of his relating to her other than this mocking hurtful? No, I didn't. <laughs> now, you said you saw no affection between any family members. Did you see any, well, did you either see or hear anything that <coughs> sounded like or looked like affection or love from Kitty to either of the boys? No, I did not. If you'd back up a little bit from that mic. It's too loud. I'm hearing your breathing at this point. <laughs> um, and concerning Jose uh, and his sons, did you see anything affectionate or warm or supportive from him to his boys? No. Did you see anything kind from either of these parents to either of the boys? Sister. Did you see any kindness being displayed? No. Do you recall what dinner time was like in that household when Jose was home? Yes. And would you describe and when Jose was there and when one or both of the boys were there? Yes. Could you describe what the atmosphere at dinner was like? Um, I found it very um, almost like a business. It was very impersonal. Um, it was a question answer session, I felt, about, um, at the time, it, it, was, it was sports, is all I heard. So there were questions and quizzes about sports? Yes. Overall. Correct. And was it, um, what was the emotional Context. I mean, how were people <coughs> talking to each other? Was it? it? There was not much emotion. It was very matter of fact um, interaction, which was very odd to me. It was odd to you? All right, that portion of the answer is stricken, the rest will remain. I want to turn your attention to um, a particular dinner time <coughs> conversation involving Jose Menendez and Eric. Okay. Do you recall there was a day when Eric lost a tennis match? Yes. Let's go back to the tennis match. Were you there? Yes, I was. And was where was this match held? Do you recall? It, it was in a Princeton area court. I don't recall exactly. And do you know whether uh, this was some major tournament or just some minor match, some routine thing? It, it was not a major tournament. Um, I don't know the exact nature of it. But it was, mm -hmm. your understanding was it was just a routine type of tennis match? Yes. And who attended the match? Um, my Aunt Kitty and myself. And Eric was playing? Yes. Lyle wasn't there, nor was he playing in that match? No. Uh, would you, uh, well, first of all, tell us, how did Eric play in that match? Sustain. Your Honor, this is foundational to the behavior of the parents. Okay, counsel, just <laughs> what, is it the result of the game? Is that what you're no. asking? Did he How win or lose? How was he doing? And I wanted to talk about what was going on during the match. Well, to just uh, ask it another way. Okay. Did you observe your Aunt Kitty during the match? Yes. And yes. what was she doing? She was watching Eric play. And how did she look when she was watching Eric play? Overall. 
Um, Eric was not doing very well, and she was very getting very uptight and upset. And how could you tell that she was uptight and upset? She was, based on what she was saying and how she was responding physically. I mean, she was. Show uh, us what um, she was doing physically, if you can, Miss Connor. Um, I mean, she would almost. Um, it's hard to describe. Well, you she, keep clenching your fists. Was she it, clenching her fists? It, yes. She and what else get, did she do? Um, saying, come on, Eric, I can't believe he's losing this match. I can't believe he's losing. I can't believe he's playing so poorly. He should never be, should never be beat by this guy. And it was just, she was very upset about how he was playing. Was she talking in a, in a, in a loud or forceful tone of voice? She was talking a loud, upset voice next to me. Okay. Was she saying anything to Eric? No. And what was the look on her face? Can you recall? A frown, upset look. And did you see Eric at the end of the match? Yes, I did. And yes. was he coming towards where you and your Aunt Kitty were? Um, he went straight to the car. And did you see the look on his face? Yes. And how did he look? He looked devastated. He looked upset also? Beyond upset. And did you then all get in the car and go somewhere? We were driving back home. And what, uh, what conversation, if any, what interaction, if any, did you observe between uh, Kitty and Eric in the car? There was total silence on the entire ride home. She said nothing to him? No. Did you say anything? I, I did not feel it was appropriate. I felt very uncomfortable. Yeah, no. Objection sustained. The answer is stricken. And what happened once you got home? Eric went to his room or somewhere, um, and um, I stayed in the kitchen helping my aunt prepare dinner. And did she talk any more about the tennis match while you were preparing dinner with her? No. Overall. And no. No, she, she, didn't talk to you. she did not. And did uh, at some point did uh, Jose come home? Yes, shortly after. And did you observe uh, an interaction between Jose and Kitty when he came home? Yes. And would you tell us what you saw and heard? This is not offered for the truth, Your Honor, but to explain Mr. Menendez's subsequent behavior. Um, as he walked in the door, the first thing he asked was, "How did Eric do?" And my aunt proceeded to explain to him the different things he had missed in the game. Like he, he uh, missed several serves, and apparently his backhand was not the greatest that day. And that was what was talked about. So she basically gave a detailed critique of Eric's performance at the match? Definitely. Mm -hmm. so uh, did she give him details about what had happened to the match? She gave him details about what happened exactly. Okay, she didn't just say, well, he lost. No, she described in what way he lost. Did she make any excuses for Eric's performance in talking to Jose? No. And what was Jose's response to uh, what uh, Kitty had was telling him? He took it very lightly and almost left. He almost left? Did he say anything? Um, I just recall him going figures. It figures? Mm -hmm. Now, was there a dinner later that evening with yourself and Jose and Kitty and Eric? Yes. And would you tell us what happened during that dinner? The entire dinner conversation was about Eric's match. Um, and it was directed towards Eric in terms of mocking and saying how he was not playing hard enough, practicing hard enough, and um, therefore never be good enough. And who was doing the talking? My uncle, uh, Jose. And how long did this criticism go on? For a long time. An hour? I don't recall exactly um, but the length of the dinner. 
<laughs> and did Eric eat anything during that dinner? Eric barely touched his plate. And uh, did you observe his facial expressions, his demeanor during this talking by his father? Eric was constantly looking down at his plate, blank look on his face, and uh, very. when I did finally look at his eyes, he had tears and a look of much pain in his eyes. Did he say anything back to his father? No, he did not. Did he defend himself? No. Did he argue? No. Did he make excuses? No. And what about Kitty? Did she um, say anything during this dinner? No. At some point, did uh, Eric leave the table? Yes, he did. And uh, was dinner over at that point, or did he leave while it was still going on? Dinner was not quite over. And uh, where did he go? He went downstairs to the basement. And at that point, when he first left the table, did you start to get up to go somewhere? I attempted to get up, yes. And what, what were you going to do? Um, I was concerned about Eric. I was going to go towards Eric. And uh, did your Uncle Jose at that point do something with respect to you? Yes. What did he do? He just raised his hand, Marianne, and I stopped. So that gesture with his hand up and calling your name stopped you from leaving to go after Eric? Yes. Now, a little while later that evening, did you find Eric? Yes. And uh, where was he? Um, Eric was still downstairs in the basement. And uh, what happened between you and Eric in the basement? Did you have a conversation with Objection him? Objection overruled. Thank you. Did you have a conversation with him? I, um, I snuck down to the basement to see how Eric was doing. Why did you sneak? Sustain. Go ahead. Just ask your next question, please. You went down, you snuck down to the basement to see how he was doing, and what did you do next? Um, I just put my arm on his shoulder and... Um, Whose shoulder? Eric's shoulder. And I just said, um, it must not be fun to be made fun of all the time. And uh, what was Eric's response? He... Um, without looking at me, just looking blank into the floor, I just said, it's all right, I'm used to it. And was that the end of the conversation? Yes. What was he doing when you went down into the basement, when you first saw him there, what was he doing? He was sitting on a stool, just looking at the floor. And what was he doing when he told you, it's all right, I'm used to it? He, he was still sitting on the stool, looking at the floor. And did you stay with him, or did you leave at that point? No, I left. Now, was this episode that you've described, this dinner, was this the first time that you had seen um, Jose criticizing and making fun of Eric at dinner? No, it was not the first time. Did, was that a frequent occurrence? Yes. Now, was this just um, fun teasing of Eric, or was it harsh criticism? In my perception, it was harsh. What aspects of what you saw in their home did you consider harsh treatment? What did you see that you considered harsh treatment? I don't understand okay. the question. What you just described is like a criticism and a ridiculing, correct? Yes. Were there other things that you saw that you considered harsh? Um, what I considered harsh is um, just the, the overall um, treatment towards Eric and, um, you know, the constant mocking and the fact that he could never do anything right in my eyes. Um, well, 
he couldn't do anything right for you, or you mean what he's being told he could never do anything right? He was told he could never do anything right. I never saw him being reinforced positively for anything, even when he did do something right. And he did win things, didn't he? Yes, he did. And when he won, he never got any praise for it or any I, I never saw that. Would he sometimes be ridiculed and mocked by his father even when he won because he somehow didn't do it the perfect way that his father wanted him to do it? Sustain. Did you ever hear his father mocking or ridiculing him after he had won? Um, I would see, I wouldn't call it mocking and ridiculing, I would see a correction on something that could have been better. So he was so. corrected? Yes. Did you know, by the way, during that summer that you were living with the family that Eric was attending um, a school for people with learning disabilities? No, I was not aware of that. Were you aware of the fact that he was attending school at all that summer? No. Uh, was he gone for part of each day? He left early in the morning and I thought he was going to a tennis camp all day. And we would, I would go with my aunt sometimes to pick him up from the tennis camp. And that would be in the afternoon? Yes. <clears throat> and I, I take it neither your aunt nor your uncle ever talked about the fact that Eric had any learning difficulties? No, they did not. At family gatherings, um, would your Aunt Kitty, in front of everyone, including the children, uh, brag about the boys? Overall. Um, the conversation and family gatherings that I had observed prior to my living at the Menendez home, my cousin's home, um, was always, um, when it was, conversation when it was geared about the boys, it was about which match they had won, who they had beaten, or what current tournament was upcoming in some way. So, so her discussion about them was focused on winning? Um, I would say competition-oriented, event-oriented. Okay. She never talked about them as people? <coughs> Sister. Well, in front of you, did she ever just talk about their personal qualities, like he's a good boy, he's a sweet boy, he's a nice boy, he's artistic, he's talented, any of that? Um, about art athletically gifted, athletically champions in, in the different tournaments, in that respect, yes. And only in that respect? Yes. And the same is true with respect to her talking about Lyle, I take it? Yes. You've described the, um, the dinner time conversations as business-like. Were they tense? Very tense. Now, you visited um, the Menendez family here in California after they moved, did you not? Yes. And you spent some time alone with your Aunt Kitty? Yes. Alone meaning you had come here with your brother, had you not? Yes. And then he left, this is your older brother, Peter? Um, he's younger than I am. I'm sorry, your younger brother, Peter? Yes. And then the youngest is Andy? Yes. He's a younger brother still, right? Correct. All right. Uh, so you had come here with Peter, and then Peter went off, and you <coughs> stayed a day with uh, your Aunt Kitty? Yes, I did. And what did she do to entertain you that day? 
the state. Was Eric with you and your Aunt Kitty that day? Um, for part of the time. Okay. What did you do after, did you pick him up someplace? Is that what happened? Yes. After you picked Eric up, what happened? Um, we went to see the house in Calabasas that was in, under construction or remodeling in some way. And uh, did she point certain things out to you in the house? Yes. And was there something about her demeanor and the way she was talking that struck you that day? Yes. Sister. In the present, was this discussion with her and her walking you through the house in Eric's presence? Yes. Okay. And did you? Do we have a time frame when this was. This was in 19. Council asked the question. Okay. Huh? When was this? Um, 1988 or 87. Between 1987 and 1988? Yes. What time of year was it that you came? I went in, in the summertime. And the Calabasas house was under construction at that time? Yes. From what you could see, was this a house that was being remodeled? Fiction irrelevant. Overall. Um, you know, I wouldn't know. I, I know it was under construction, and you can see that it was under construction. There okay. were like wooden beams, and I don't know. I wouldn't know. I'm known the difference. Okay, mm -hmm. so you don't know if it was an existing house that was being changed or no, brand new construction? No, I didn't know. Okay. Uh, during the course, then, of this time when she's showing you this house, did, were you struck by any, anything about the way she was talking about it? Section irrelevant. Sustained. Were you, um, either when you were in Princeton with your Aunt Kitty or when you were here with her, uh, made aware of her uh, use to any extent of drugs or tranquilizers? As to the form of the question, the objection is sustained. Did you, um, did you know whether or not your Aunt Kitty was taking tranquilizer pills? Let's start with in Princeton when you were staying with the family. As to the form of the question, the objection is sustained. The question is, did you see? Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Did you see her taking pills? Yes, I did. Did she also tell you she was taking pills? Overall. Um, she didn't tell me I was next to her. Okay, tell us what you saw. Um, well, we were in the kitchen and she took out a bottle that I could read. It said Valium on it. And Overall. And um, so I saw her taking them, and she must have seen a questioning look in my mind. Right, you've answered the question. Did she say something to you when, after you had seen her take the pills? She said that she, that was the way she got through the day. I want to turn your attention for a moment, Ms. Connor, to um, the layout of the house in Princeton. When you stayed there that summer, um, did you stay in a, a particular room? I stayed in one of the guest rooms. And what was the access to that room? <coughs> Say you come in the front door, how do you get from the entryway to that particular room? It would be on the right wing of the house. And was it on the same level as the entry? Um, you would go up a few steps and then sort of make a ride so that my room would be facing the entrance, the driveway into the entrance of the house. Now, when you go up those few steps to get to that guest room, it, did those steps only lead to that guest room? Yes. So that guest room had its own separate way in and out of it, correct? Right. Now, do you know where the master bedroom was located in the house? Um, it was totally separate from where I was. Okay, was, it, was it to the far right? It, it was to the far right, but it had different, a different walkway leading to that area. And do you recall that there was a staircase right next to the master bedroom that led upstairs to Eric's room? Yes. Um, did your Aunt Kitty ever hug you? Overall. No. 
Did you hug her? I, I tried once and it wasn't well received, so I didn't again. And just to clarify, um, I originally talked to you about these things, do you recall, on March 11th, 1993? Yes. And um, I showed you the summary that I wrote of our conversation uh, the other night, you recall that? Yes. And uh, did you correct one aspect that when you were staying at this house, um, it was before the family moved to California, not after? That's correct. And when you had indicated that you remember being there for one period of time alone with Lyle, uh, what was the correction that you gave me? It, it was prior to the family moving to California, and it was during um, a trip where Eric had gone away for a match with my aunt and uncle, okay. and I stayed there with only Lyle in the house. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'm not here for you. Any questions on behalf of Lyle Menendez? Cross-examination. <coughs> Ms. Cano, um, regarding this thing you've just testified to about when you stayed with Lyle, that was while the family was still living in Princeton, is that correct? Yes. And that was during the summer of 1986? Yes. And that would have been then before you left um, in August, is that correct? Yes. <coughs> before you went off to college in 192, I believe you testified that your family moved to the Princeton area in 1979, is that correct? What they, did you say? I went to college in 1982. 82, yes. All right. And then between 1979 and 1982, you were living in the Princeton area. Is that correct? That's, well, yes. Princeton, not in Princeton town. Lawrenceville or um, Within an West hour? Windsor. Within yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I believe you indicated that the family, that it would be the Menendez family, um, had many family gatherings. Is that correct? I did not indicate that they had family gatherings at that time. Well, between 1979 and 1982, do you remember testifying about the behavior of the defendants, that they were wild? They were, I think, using the phrase Menendez. Yeah, I think All right. Um, All right, if you can rephrase the okay. question, clarify it, please. I'm talking about, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the family, your mother, your aunt and your uncle Jose, that family. All right, do you understand what I'm referring to? Yes. And I believe you indicated that there were family gatherings involving the cousins, the aunts and uncles, is that correct? That's correct. Did that also involve your grandparents? Yes. And I believe you indicated that these gatherings occurred at your Aunt Terry's house, is that correct? Right. And I believe you indicated that they were frequent. Is that, isn't that what you testified to? I said they were basically after in any special occasion, any holiday, we always had gatherings, yes. And special, That's what I call frequent. All right. Mother's yeah. Day, Father's Day, birthdays. There's a lot of cousins, a lot of birthdays. So would these gatherings have been at least once a month, would you say? Yes. Okay. And did you celebrate all the cousins and the aunt and uncles and your grandparents' birthdays as well? Everybody's. And during this period of time, now I'm referring to between 1979 and when you went to college, right. that's the period we're talking about where the gatherings were frequent. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. I believe you indicated that the defendants um, during this time period uh, would run around the house a lot. Yes, they did. Okay. Now, most of the cousins are female in your family. Is that correct? Yes. And I think you indicated that um, that you would try to play cards or do something with your female cousins and that the, um, the defendants would be running around. Is that correct? Yes, I said that. Now, how far away from the defendant's home did you live during this three-year time period? 
Um, we moved several times within that time period, so it varied each year, but we always lived within a half hour's distance, within 20 minutes to a half hour at and, the most. And during that period mm -hmm. of three years before you went to college, did you ever go to the Menendez's home? That um, is the defendant's home. Um, I may have gone to, in passing, not to a gathering that I recall at their home during that period of time. I believe you indicated that in 1982 you started college, is that correct? Yes. What state did you go to college? In Pennsylvania. And how many um, hours would it take you to return to the family gatherings while you were in college? It was three hours away. So during that period of time, the four years that you were in college, did you attend these gatherings less frequently? That's correct. Okay. And so you were aware that there were gatherings going on that you, that you did not go to, correct? Yes, there were. Now, d during that period of three years when, um, before you went to college and you'd have these family gatherings, you indicated that um, defendants would run around a lot. What were they doing? It, it, run like, it, it seemed like hide and seek, almost run around the house, um, would hiding and running. And just Would they ever play with any of your boy cousins? I don't recall it at that time. I don't, I don't have any boy cousins, by the way. They're my brothers. I'm sorry. Um, well, do, um, may I approach your honor and get the family tree back up? All right, so the only, the only other male cousins in the family in the family would be your brothers, Peter and Andy, correct? That's correct. And so there were four girls by Terry and Carlos and then three girls in your family, correct? That's right. And so the total number of boy cousins were the two defendants and your two brothers, correct? That's right. Did you ever see your two brothers playing with their cousins, the defendants, during this three-year period of time before you went to college? Uh, they did on occasion. You know, the now, during these family gatherings, did the adults ever go and leave the kids alone to play together? Um, I don't know what you mean by go. Well, go where? Uh, at, sometimes at family gatherings, the adults go do their thing and the children do something different. Did that ever mm -hmm. occur at these family gatherings before you went to college? Yes. Now, I believe you indicated at some point while you were at college that your brother Andy became close with Eric, is that correct? Yes. And did you notice that they were close when you went to the family gatherings during the four years you were in college? During the four years I went in college, that's when I noticed that they would spend time together talking, which I hadn't seen before. Now while you were at college, approximately how many of these gatherings would you go to per year? Um, it's hard for me to say exactly, but it varied depending on how busy I was that year. So it varied per year. Um, I would say definitely Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, um, and Mother's Day and Father's Day. Um, but less so for birthdays? It's less so for birthdays, yes. When you went in the summer of 1986 to stay with the Menendez family, um, how were the arrangements made for you to do that? Was it at your request? Were you invited? How did that come about? Um, my Aunt Kitty offered for me to stay with her when she found my family was moving. And um, I wasn't sure that I was ready to move to Florida just yet at the time. And did you eventually move to Florida, or did you stay on the East Coast? I know I moved to Florida. Was that sh in August of 1986 that you moved to Florida? Yes. And that was to where your mother was living, correct? That's right. So you were invited by Kitty Menendez to stay with him while your mom moved somewhere else, correct? That's right. Uh, was she ever nice to you? Yes, she was. Did you ever do things with her? Yes, what many kind, times. What kind of things would you, you and she do together, just generally? Um, we went shopping. Um, she liked to go to um, a little English, Danish village outside of Princeton. We went there many times. Uh, we would go work out. I like to work out and she would come with me. All right, so um, she, she was nice to you that summer, is that correct? I did things with her. She was a fun aunt to be with, yes. Yeah, she was always up and ready to do things um, outside the house. 
Did yeah. she behave differently around her husband? Yes. And could you describe the change in her behavior when she was with you versus when her husband was around? Um, you know, I don't know if there's specifically a change in behavior. It was just with me, it, it was more of um, more of a buddy system. We know we'd be like go do things together, like a buddy buddies. Um, when she was at home, um, it was more of a structured self. I don't know how to describe that. Um, Did you ever see Mr. Menendez try to humiliate his wife in front of you? Yes, I did. And did he ever do things that would make her almost cry? Uh, what, I, what I described was he, he said things that would make her almost cry, yes. Now, did you ever see Mr. Menendez hit anyone in the house, yourself included? I never witnessed any hitting, no. Did you ever see um, your Aunt Kitty ever try to defend her sons to their father? I did. I, I did on a few occasions. And what would be the result when she tried to defend her sons against their father? Um, I don't know if I call it defend, but it was when she would say, oh, Jose, or something like that, it would almost redirect the mocking towards her. So it didn't happen very quickly. I believe you indicated that um, on occasion, uh, while you were living in the house that summer of 86, that you saw uh, Mrs. Menendez take a pill which you believed to be Valium, is that correct? Yes. Did you ever see any change in her behavior as a result of having taken this pill? No. Did you ever see her pass out? No, I didn't see her pass out. During this summer that you lived there in 1986, was Mr. Menendez home every night and every weekend? No. Okay. Could you describe? Um, he, did he take business trips? Yes. And did you? Can you describe how frequently he would take them? Was it a weekly occurrence, a monthly occurrence? Um, well, I was only there uh, under two months, so um, I, to my understanding, it was it was very frequently that he would be out of town. And would that be for more than a day or two at a time? Yes. While you were living there that summer, did anybody else come and spend the night there? Any other relatives or friends of the defendants or anyone that you recall? Well, I, well, I was staying there, no. Now, during these dinner conversations, which you've described, um, were you ever asked to participate in them in terms of uh, listing what you had done? Or would we ever, did you ever participate? Yes. And yes. in what regard did you participate? Um, well, at the time, I was interviewing for jobs. Um, and so I would be asked how my interview went, did what kinds of questions they asked me, and how I responded, those kinds of things. Did they ever offer you help in how to respond to a job interview, either of the parents? Yes. Which parent? Um, both. I believe you indicated that um, you went to at least one tennis match where Eric Menendez played and lost. Is that correct? Yes. Did you go to any other tennis matches with um, that Eric Menendez played in that summer with I, his mom? I did not attend any other after that. Now, I believe that a lot of your testimony on direct examination dealt with Eric Menendez. Was Lyle Menendez home that summer? Um, he, I know he was living there. I didn't see Lyle very much. All right, when you say he was living there, where was he living? Was he living in the house? His, his room was um, sort of off to the left wing of the house, almost separate from the house. So I couldn't, if he was home or not home, I, most of the time I wouldn't know. Did, was, you, did he join in these dinner table uh, conversations when he was there? Sometimes. How often? Many, we, I'm sorry. No, I said many times Lyle would not be present. Uh, and yeah. did you ever have dinner? Um, did you ever have dinner with a family where Mr. Menendez was not present because he was out of town? Um, yes. In your presence, did you ever see Mr. Menendez um, interact with his son, Lyle? Um, a few times. Did he treat, many. from what you could tell, did he treat Lyle differently from the way he treated Eric? Um, I, I wasn't exactly comparing it. You know, it was it was still um, the times that I saw it was Lyle's girlfriend was present. 
All right, now you say Lyle's girlfriend was present. Was this at, at a dinner? It would be, yes, a couple of times at a dinner or in the living room watching a movie. Those were more, that was more of the setting where I would see Lyle. During the two months that you stayed there in 1986, did Lyle Menendez appear to have a girlfriend during that entire time? He, yes, he had a girlfriend. And she came to the home frequently? I rarely saw Lyle without his girlfriend when he was at the house. I believe you indicated that in the summer, or yes, in the summer of either 1987 or 1988, you and your brother Peter came to California, and you had one day where you were here without your brother Peter, is that correct? That's correct. And when you were staying he here, when your brother was here, where did you stay? I only stayed um, one night at a I don't know exactly where the house was located. It was not uh, Calabasas house, another house. It was not the Calabasas house? No, that was under construction. All right, did you stay with the um, Mr. and Mrs. Menendez during that time? Yes. Can we have a moment, please? Yes. Any redirect. Ms. Cano, you described um, an aspect of your relationship with your Aunt Kitty as like buddies and you'd go out and have fun together. That's right. Did you ever see her treat her sons that way, the way she treated you? No. They didn't seem to be buddies, did they? Sustain. And you also indicated to uh, Mrs. Bozanich that you don't recall any other relatives or any friends staying over at the house in Princeton while you were there, correct? Correct. Do you recall ever meeting any friends of Eric or Lyle, ever? No. With respect to your personal knowledge, was your brother Andy the only friend that you ever knew Eric had? The only person I saw Eric interacting with and speaking with. So to my understanding, I would say yes. Did, uh, did Eric or his parents or anybody else in the family in Eric's presence ever talk about any other person who was supposedly a friend of his? Objection, Halston, your Sustained. Was anyone ever identified or pointed out to you as a friend of Eric's besides your own brother? No. Now, you said that um, the few times that you saw Lyle at the house that summer, he was in the company of his girlfriend. Yes. What was her name? Stacy. And when Stacy was there at the house, was Mr. Menendez less likely to be mocking and humiliating and belittling Lyle? Um, it would occur, but not like it did in the dinner table. It was different. And was it primarily Mr. Menendez's way of treating the rest of his family that made you not want to stay there? Um, I would say it was just the overall unaffectionate ambiance of the household that I felt very uncomfortable with. It was very unlike what, I, what I'm used to. What you were used to. Right. It's I have nothing for him. Anything else? All right, thank you. You may step down. You're excused. All right, take a seat on in the jury box, please. Yes, my name is Peter J. Cano, C A N O Cano. Menendez? Yes. And were you married to Marta Cano? Yes. And are you now divorced? Yes, we are. And how long have you been divorced? Since uh, 1979 or 1980. And where do you live now? In Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico. 
during the time that you were married to Marta, uh, did you ever have occasion to stay at the Menendez home in Muncie, New York? Yes, I did. <laughs> and this was the home of, of Kitty and Jose Menendez, is yes, that correct? Yes. And at the time you were staying there, uh, did, were the boys small? Yes, they were very small. Uh, we were going back to 1972 or 1973. So in 1970, say if it's 1973 and Lyle was born in 68, he would have been about five years old? Yes. And Eric would have been about two and a half? Just about. Okay. And did you have an opportunity to observe the interaction of, the, of Lyle and Eric and their parents? Yes, I, I did. And in particular, did you observe a situation in which Jose Menendez had a confrontation with his son, Lyle Menendez? Yes. Okay. And did this confrontation start out with, um, how did the situation start? Let's do it that way. Yes, we were uh, having a family gathering and uh, uh, Lyle was uh, very uh, restless and uh, hyperactive. He couldn't uh, uh, sit still, so he was kind of running. And uh, uh, Jose shouted at him, stop. And, and uh, apparently he didn't hear. Okay, now when you say apparently he didn't hear, was that because he didn't stop? He didn't stop. Now, normally when Jose yelled stop, would he stop? By all means, yes, he would. So on this occasion, he didn't stop? No, he didn't. And what happened? Well, uh, Jose uh, stood up, uh, grabbed him, and uh, just looked at him and uh, right in the eyes and uh, said something to him that I couldn't hear. And uh, Lyle became incontinent at the time. And. And what do you mean by he became incontinent? Well, he, uh, uh, he, uh, he wetted himself on the floor. And how did he look when this happened? He looked pale and uh, trembling. We have an identification of the date or time frame this happened. I believe he said it was 1972 or 73? Yes. Okay. And now, all the family is around when this is happening? Well, yes, we had a family gathering as uh, we did uh, every year, and that was near December, or in December rather, 1972, 1973. And after that happened, you said Lyle looked pale. Did he look like, was he laughing? Did he look sad? No, on the contrary, he looked very scared. And what happened after that? Well, after he became incontinent, his father uh, took him to Lyle's room, and uh, uh, I uh, followed him. Now, was that down a hallway? <coughs> yes, it was. Why did you follow him? Because... Uh, Sustained. Okay, you followed him? Yes, I did follow him. Where did they go? Uh, to Lyle's room. And did you go into the room? Yes, I entered the room and uh, kind of yelled at him. Uh, when I say him, at, at Jose's, because... Uh, uh, Jose was doing things that, uh, according to uh, to myself, were way out of it. And uh, Jose, in that instance, uh, well, hit, hit Lyle. Okay. Now, how did he hit Lyle? With his uh, closed fist. Where did he hit him? Even on his chest or belly. Did he seem to hit him hard? Yes, he did. And Lyle would have been about five years old at this yes, time? Yes, yes. And did Lyle cry out in any way? I don't remember seeing him crying. He just, uh, I don't know how, but he took it. And uh, apparently he lost uh, uh, his hair or something because he looked very pale and, uh, I, uh, and that was it. I did uh, kind of uh, uh, shouted at uh, Jose. Okay, now, did he hit him in the chest with his closed fist? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and did he seem to be hitting him hard, or was he just... Yes, very hard. Overall. 
did he hit him hard or was he just fooling around? No, 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 very hard. In my estimation, very hard. So is they a big man? Big and strong. And after you witnessed him hitting Lyle like this, uh, did you say something to Jose? I certainly did. What did you say? Uh, I cannot repeat the same things that I did say. I gave him a good piece of my mind, and I told him that was not the way to bring up a child, to which uh, he responded that if I didn't like that, I could leave his house, that he could raise his uh, children as, as he saw fit. Did you leave his house? Yes, I did. Thank you. I have nothing further. Examination on behalf of Eric Mendez. No, Your Honor, thank you. Cross examination. Mr. Tano, did you ever go back to the Menendez house after they secured? Not to that house. I did go to uh, the next house they bought, and just for a family gathering again, but without staying at the house. So you were staying at the house during this incident? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever see the family again at any family gatherings after? <coughs> yes, several times. Anything else? All right, thank you. May I step down? You're excused. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sure is. Yes, ma'am. Casey. We'll oh. call you Mr. Whalen. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Whalen, do you know Eric Menendez? Yes, ma'am. And uh, how, do you how did you come to know him? Um, he came to high school, uh, in Calabasas High School, I went to high school um, my junior year. And what year was your junior year at Calabasas High School? Fall of 87, spring of 88. If I were to tell you that Eric moved to California in the fall of 86 and began Calabasas High School then, would you know if you met him in his first year there or in his second year there? It would, the, it would be the second year. I mean, that was when I got to know him was, was that time. Okay. And uh, at Calabasas High School, were you a member of any of the athletic teams? Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I played football in the fall, and I, I ran track in the spring. And when you got to know Eric, did you know if he was a member of any of the athletic teams at Calabasas High School? Yes, he was a member of the tennis team. You were not? No, ma'am. Now, did you know another member of the tennis team named Craig Signorelli? Yes, very well. Did you know Craig Signorelli before you got to know Eric Menendez? Oh, yes, ma'am. And at the time that you got to know Eric Menendez, was Craig Signorelli a friend of yours? Yes, ma'am. And how long had you known Mr. Signorelli before you met Eric Menendez? Uh, I came to middle school in second grade. Craig was in the third grade, so I, I'd known him for quite some time, at least of him. And did you know other uh, students who knew Craig Signorelli? Oh, yes, ma'am. And uh, all through your schooling, from the time you first came to know Mr. Signorelli through high school, <coughs> did you from time to time discuss Mr. Signorelli with other students? Yes, ma'am. Now, at some point after you came to know Eric Menendez, uh, did you come to go to his home? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall where he was living when he was attending Calabasas High School? Uh, in Calabasas Park. And if I might approach, Your Honor. Yes. We have a picture chart here. Do you recall where he was living when he was attending Calabasas High School? Do you recall where he was living when he was attending Calabasas High School? Do you recall where he was living when he was attending Calabasas High School? Yes, ma'am. And uh, what house do you recognize? Well, the, the Calabasas House, um, 4530. Okay. You've identified this house here, 4530 Park Luvorno? Yes, ma'am. And to the best of your knowledge, was that a house that the Menendez family owned or rented? Uh, I, I, have, I, I don't know. I didn't know. And during the time that you knew Eric, that he lived in, the, in the, the valley, basically in Calabasas, did he always live at this particular house? Yeah, yes, well, I went to school. Yeah, yes. And did you know of another house in the Calabasas area that the family was building or remodeling? Yes, a, 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 a kind of above the valley in Mulholland Highway. 
to the best of your knowledge, did the Menendez family ever move into the Mulholland Highway house? No, ma'am. No, no, they didn't. The house was never completed when they were there. Wayland, did you visit the Park of Warno house while Eric lived there? Um, 20, 30 times, maybe. And was there anything unusual or noticeable about the condition of some of the rooms of that house? Yes, ma'am. And would you describe for the jury what was unusual? Um, well, it was, um, the family room was, was always kind of dirty, um, and the living room and, and various rooms had boxes that were, were there for the duration of, of time that I knew Eric, and one of the rooms was piled with boxes almost to the ceiling where you couldn't walk into it. Was that the living room? Yes, ma'am. So from the time you knew Eric all the way till he moved from that house, the living room was a room filled with boxes? And, and other rooms had boxes the whole time while I lived there. And did these appear to be the kind of boxes people packed when they moved from place to place? Exactly, yes, ma'am. <laughs> now, did you come to know at some point uh, that Craig Signorelli was not permitted at Eric's house? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall specifically hearing Jose Menendez, Mr. Menendez, say something to that effect? Yes, ma'am. And what do you recall, and did you hear this at the house? Yes, ma'am. Actually, at the time, um, Craig and I were quite close, and I had mentioned to Eric why he hadn't been spending as much time with us at the house, and uh, Mr. Menendez said that Craig Signorelli kid is not allowed in this house. So you were having a conversation with Eric about why Sig Mr. Signorelli was no longer around? With Mr. Menendez there. And do you recall when that was? No, I don't. It was sometime while they were living at the Calabasas house. And to the best of your recollection, did the family move from the Calabasas house in the fall of 1988? Yes, just, yes. It was some time before that? Yes, ma'am. At some point in uh, the summer of 1989, in August of 1989, did you hear that Eric's parents uh, had been killed? Yes, ma'am. And uh, did you receive notice that, it, by some means, that there was going to be a memorial service? Yes, ma'am. Uh, did you attend that memorial service? Yes, ma'am. Did any other members of your family attend the service? Yes, ma'am. Who else attended? Uh, my mother, and I had a friend who was in town, and his father came with us as well, so the four of us went. And was that friend's name, last name Jones? Yes, ma'am, it was. Now, what's your mother's name? Uh, Kathy Bulow Cohen. And do you recall, Mr. Whalen, where the memorial service was held? Um, I believe the building was called something, Screen Actors Guild, maybe uh, it was on the Sunset Boulevard, <clears throat> as I remember. And do you recall at some point, either uh, before or after the memorial service, uh, learning uh, that Eric was about to travel somewhere? Um, it was when I walked in the door and I met, saw Eric for the first time in a while. And uh, did Eric indicate to you that he was going to be leaving Los Angeles? Yes, ma'am. And where did he indicate he would be going? Um, back to New Jersey for what I thought was the funeral. For, for the actual funeral? Yes, ma'am. And uh, did he indicate whether he was going to stay in New Jersey or come back to the Los Angeles area? He, he said he would be returning to Los Angeles. And when he said that, did that uh, provoke you to talk to your mother about something? Yes, ma'am. Um, my mother had offered for Eric to, to stay at my house for a couple weeks um, just because she felt like if I was in that situation, she'd hope a friend of mine would do the same for me. So. And did you make an offer to Eric at the memorial service that when he returned from New Jersey, he could stay at your house? Yes, ma'am. And uh, what was his response to that offer? Um, he, he, he accepted. He said that would be great, but he didn't, you know, he said he'd call me when he was coming back to, you know, he, he was going back for a few days and he know the, didn't know the exact time he would be coming back. And after the memorial service, did you spend some time with Eric um, at a hotel that he and some of his family members were staying at? Yes, ma'am. And during the time that you spent with Eric at the hotel, could you describe what his demeanor was like? Um, a somber, um, upset, 
um, uh, crying, you know, just, uh, you know, basically, uh, yeah, sad. Sad would be the, 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 the tone. And was that true for the, uh, was that true at the memorial service as well? Yes, ma'am. And was that uh, somber and sad demeanor what you saw throughout the time that you were with him at the hotel after the memorial service? Yes, ma'am. Now, did you see Lyle Menendez um, at the hotel <coughs> after the memorial service also? Yes, ma'am. And at a, was there a point at which Lyle left and went to the airport? Yes, we took him to the airport. And who was with? Um, Eric and Lyle and Pete Jones, Jr. and myself. And do you recall what day that was that you took Lyle to the airport? I believe that was the day of the memorial, which was the 25th of August. Friday? Yes, ma'am. And did Eric leave the same day? No, ma'am. And did you know what, when, when it was that Eric was supposed to leave for New Jersey? Uh, I believe it was the next day. Did you take Eric to the airport also? No, ma'am. Did you return from the airport with Eric and Pete Jones, Jr. to the Bel Air Hotel? Yes, ma'am. After dropping off Lyle? Yes, ma'am. Now, did you receive a phone call or phone calls from Eric when he was in New Jersey? T to pick him up, yes, ma'am. Okay. Were arrangements made before he actually came back for you to pick him up? Yes, ma'am. And uh, do you recall uh, the day upon which you were supposed to pick him up? I believe it was September 1st. And that would be September 1st? Of 1989. Now, were you about to go, uh, let's strike that, when did you graduate, Mr. Whalen, from Calabasas High School? Um, uh, 89, June of 89. June of 89. And were you starting college in the fall of 89? Yes, ma'am. And where were you starting college that fall? Santa Barbara City College. And were you due to go to Santa Barbara to start attending college on a particular day? September 5th. And in fact, just to jump ahead, did you leave, uh, your family lives in Agora? Yes, ma'am. Did you leave your family home in Agora and go to Santa Barbara on September 5th? Yes, that is correct. Let's back up then to the previous Friday, September 1st, okay? Mm -hmm. um, on that day, uh, were you supposed to uh, do something before you went to pick Eric up at the airport? Yes, ma'am. And what were you supposed to do? I was supposed to meet at the house on Elm Drive and meet a police officer there to go pick up Eric at the airport. You mean a police officer or you mean a private security guard? Um, a security a guard, whoever was watching the house. And uh, did you go to the house and attempt to talk to the security guards? Yes, ma'am. And would they talk to you? No, they told me to, to get away from the house and that it, I had no business being there. And did that disturb you? Very much so. Did you then place a telephone call to your home and, without telling us what was said, talk to your mother? Yes, ma'am. And after talking to your mother, did you then proceed, without a security guard, to the airport? That is correct. And at the airport, did you meet Eric's plane? Yes, ma'am. And uh, did you and Eric then go somewhere after the airport? We went back to the um, the Beverly Hills house on, on Elm Drive. And did Eric tell you why he was going back to the house? Uh, he needed to pick up some things, he wanted to get his messages, and he needed to meet somebody there. And did you know, did he describe to you what sort of person he was going to meet there? Uh, not, nothing I remember right, right now. I just knew we had to meet somebody there and he needed things to do, pick up at the house. Right. With respect to the person he needed to meet there, was there any reference made uh, to the computer in the home? Not at the time, not till we got to the house. So when I picked him up at the airport, there was no mention of that. Okay. When you got to the house, did one of the security guards give Eric something? He gave him a note. And uh, who purportedly wrote the note? Lyle. And uh, did Eric have some kind of reaction? Well, first of all, did Eric look at the note? Yes, he did. And did he have some kind of reaction to the note? Yes, ma'am. He was um, th um, astonished that, that the note was from Lyle. Okay. And did he explain to you what was astonishing him about the note? Yeah, he calls for Gibson. 
Well, you're not. It's being offered only for state of mind. Well, maybe I'll ask another question. Did Eric comment about the handwriting in the note? Yes, ma'am. And what did he say about the handwriting? This is not being offered for truth, Your Honor. Again, yeah. Mr. Whalen, did Eric say something about the handwriting on this note? Uh, yes, ma'am. What did he say? He, they said the note was from Lyle, but he couldn't figure out how it could be from Lyle. He, he couldn't figure out the handwriting. Did he say it didn't look like Lyle's handwriting? Exactly. And did that seem to alarm him? Very much so, both of us. You got scared too? Yeah, I couldn't figure out what was going on. Now at some point, at, well, strike that. Did Eric check his message machine while he was at the house? At that point, after we'd received the, the, the note that was supposedly written from Lyle, we went upstairs to check his answer machine and, and pick up a few things. Okay. Now, do you then recall uh, some person or people coming and being in his parents' bedroom where the computer was? I remember Eric and I looking over a gentleman's shoulder while he was trying to do something with the computer. I wasn't that attentive, but I remember us both standing behind a gentleman working on the computer. And do you specifically remember the gentleman arriving or the gentleman going up into the bedroom? Do you remember those details? The only thing that really sticks out in my head is, is standing, Eric and I both standing behind him, looking over his shoulder, trying to work on the computer. And this, was, this gentleman was seated and you and Eric were standing? Yes, ma'am. And do you remember at some point uh, you left Eric standing behind the man and you went and sat down somewhere? Yeah, I, I kind of, I, I had a tennis ball laying, they're laying around. I was just kind of laying down on the, sitting down on the bed. And this was in his parents' room? Yes, ma'am. And do you have a recollection of being on the bed with a tennis ball or playing with a tennis ball? Yes, ma'am. Now, after this period when you, this person was, this, per, this person was a man working on the computer. Sustained. This person who was working on the computer, was, he, was it male or female? He was, he, it was a male. At some point after you remember that person being in the room, um, was anything said about anything having been erased from the computer? <coughs> Eric, Eric was, uh, yeah, on, on our ride home we talked about it. He couldn't figure out what had happened on the computer, and I didn't know exact details at that time until we'd gotten back to my house. Okay. On, all right, at some point this person is there, and then at some point this person leaves, the person working on the computer? Yes, ma'am. And at, at some point, do you and Eric leave the house uh, in Beverly Hills? Yeah, and we went out to my house. In Agora? Yes, ma'am. And on the ride out to your house, Eric tells you that what about Something was wrong with, with the will on the computer, and he couldn't figure out what had happened. Did he say something was wrong, or did he say something was erased? Uh, something to that effect. I don't recall the exact words. Something was definitely wrong with the computer, that, with the will. I didn't remember exactly what it was. And do you recall after Eric got to your house, do you recall his efforts to contact anyone? Yes, he, right as soon as we walked in the door, he tried to get in contact with Lyle um, back east. And do you recall him trying to call any other relatives besides Lyle? Uh, his aunt, I believe. Do you remember which aunt? Uh, I do not. Was that also a person back east? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall whether or not Eric connected with either his brother or his aunt at that point? Not, not, I don't believe he got in contact with him until the next day. Now, that evening, did Eric sleep over at your house? Yes, ma'am. And that's that Friday night, September 1st? Yeah, my, my mother, my sister, and I had gone to dinner with him, and then we came back and went to sleep. Okay. Before we get to the, to, to the dinner, you're certain he slept at your house that Friday night? Without a doubt. And did he sleep at your house the, f that, the next day, Saturday night? That is correct. And did he sleep at your house the next day, Sunday night? That is correct. And Monday night? That is correct. And then on, was it Tuesday that you went to school? Uh, the 5th. I don't exactly remember what day. <laughs> uh, the 5th, I think, is, it was a Tuesday. But is it true that every day from the point you picked Eric up at the airport until you left for school, he slept at your house? That is correct. Now, let's go back a little bit to the, to the Beverly Hills house when the computer person was there. Was Craig Signorelli there? No, ma'am. Now, Mr. Whalen, your hair is sort of sandy colored. Would that be an accurate description of it now? That is correct. And what color are your eyes? Green. Light eyes? Yes, ma'am. And in 
September of 1989. Um, were you still playing football? I, I was still avidly working out. I had just finished my senior season, yes. And were you uh, big? Yes, ma'am. I mean, were you bigger in, in stature than Eric? That is correct. Oh, yeah. Now, do you remember, Mr. Whalen, whether or not the, co the, the person who was working on the computer was accompanied by a woman? I, I, I don't recall. I, I just distinctly remember a gentleman working on the computer and Eric and I standing there. That, that's about what I remembered about it. Okay, so you don't recall if there was a woman who came with him or if there wasn't a woman? There could have been. Now, at some point um, before you left for school on September 5th, did you see Craig Signorelli at your house? Uh, yes. And uh, what did he do when he came to your house? Um, well, we, the three of us went out and did something one night, and I think uh, he and Eric, w for a couple hours one night, might have gone out and done something. But that, yeah, I saw him maybe two or three times before I left for school at Tops. But on all of those days, Eric slept at your house. That is correct. Now, on October 3rd, 1990, after Eric was arrested, uh, did you uh, have a conversation with Detective Zoller of the Beverly Hills Police Department? Yes, ma'am. And did Detective Zoller ask you in the course of that interview uh, whether or not during the time you were with Eric uh, he had ever discussed his parents killing with you? Yes, he did ask me that question. And did you relate to Detective Zoller a statement that you heard Eric make? Yes, ma'am. And where was Eric when he made the statement that you related to Detective Zoller? Um, we, were, we were at the Beverly Hills Hotel. <coughs> the Beverly Hills or the Bel Air? Uh, the Bel Air Hotel, I'm sorry. And was this the night after the memorial service? I believe it was the night of. The night of the memorial service? Yes. And who else, who were you with besides Eric? Um, Andy Pierce, uh, I believe Robin Rosenblum was there, and Pete Jones, my, my friend who was in town. Okay. Now, what was the statement that you told Detective Zoller you had heard Eric say? Well, there were four, of our, four or five of us sitting around, and I overheard him say something to the fact that um, if I found who killed my parents, I'd have to go to jail because I would kill them. Now, was that said directly to you, or was it said to the group, or was it said to someone else? It was, it was said to somebody else. I kind of overheard it, because there were four or five of us all kind of sitting around. And before you heard Eric say that, was, was he engaged in a conversation with someone else? Yes, and I was in my own. And you were talking to someone else as well? That is correct. <laughs> and did you hear what preceded Eric making that statement? Did you hear what someone else said to him? No, I didn't. And do you, can you remember now who it was Eric was talking to? Which of the group? No, I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't remember. And was that the only statement that you ever overheard Eric make about the killing of his parents? That is correct. Now, Was there a point just before you graduated, um, I'll strike that, was there a point when you and Eric became rather close friends? Yes, yes ma'am. And during the time that you were close friends, did Eric ever express to you um, a desire on his part to play some other sport besides tennis? Yeah, he, he wanted to play football. And uh, did he ever play football? No, he did not. And uh, do you know why he didn't? Um, his parents wouldn't let him. And let me show you. Um, yeah, that's my yearbook. 
And do you recognize this inscription inside the front cover? Yes, ma'am. And who wrote that inside the cover of your book? Um, Eric did. And in that inscription, does Eric make reference to the fact uh, that his parents would not allow him to play football? Yes, ma'am. And does he say, in fact, parents can be that way? Yes, ma'am. Now, did you consider that, when Eric wrote that in your book, to be a complaint on his part about his parents? Oh, without a doubt. Well, he complained about it to me before even writing it in the book about not being able to play. Okay. And was that the only topic about which Eric uh, ever complained to you about his parents? That I can remember, yes. Um, someone will tell me the next number is wrong. 211. And I'm marking the copy of the page of that book as 211. In signing his name to the inside of the yearbook, the copy is still in front of you, did he use um, three different names, basically? Yes, ma'am. Was one of them E-Man? <laughs> That's correct. Was that a nickname you knew Eric by? Yes, ma'am. Was one of them, in quotes, Shepherd? Yes, ma'am. Was that a nickname you knew Eric by? Yes, ma'am. And was the third signature his name, Eric Menendez? Exactly. Yes, ma'am. Now, did you have a nickname also, besides Casey? Yes, ma'am. And to your knowledge, did Craig Signorelli have a nickname also? Yes, ma'am. What was Craig Signorelli's nickname? Um, the, the Wizard. That was Craig's or yours? Oh, no. I, I, was, I was the Wizard. Craig was the King. All right, so Craig was nicknamed King. Yes, ma'am. You were nicknamed Wizard. Yes, yes ma'am. And Eric was nicknamed Shepherd. Yes, ma'am. Uh, was there a time when Eric told you that you should be called King? Yes, when he left for Beverly Hills. And uh, did you have a conversation with Craig Signorelli where he indicated that he knew you had been given his nickname? Yes, ma'am. Was was Mr. Sig did Craig Sustain Signorelli the ever? Excuse me. Sustain the answers. I know. I'm going to start over. See if I can keep one up there. Um, did you have a conversation with Craig Signorelli in which he demonstrated jealousy of you? Sustain. Well, I'd like to be heard. Okay. okay. If I can make this clear. Um, was there some rivalry be between yourself and Craig for the <coughs> friendship of Eric, at least in Craig's mind? Yes, ma'am. Well, especially when I got the name uh, King or we switched names when Eric thought I should be dubbed that name, there was maybe a little. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when you were renamed King, Craig was upset? Yes, ma'am. This was some evidence that Eric preferred your friendship to his? Uh, maybe a little. Uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. That's how... Was this how Mr. Signorelli behaved? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> now, I, I had asked you earlier if you were familiar, you were familiar, strike that. You had told us earlier that you were familiar with uh, Mr. Signorelli for many years, and you knew, I take it, many people who also knew him. Yes, ma'am. Um, and over the years of knowing him and uh, seeing him uh, interact with other people, did you form some opinion about his uh, honesty? Yes, ma'am. And what is that opinion? Um, I just, I questioned a few things that he had been. Well, let me make this clear for you when you're giving an opinion. Okay. In your opinion, is Craig Signorelli an honest young man or not an honest young man? Not an honest young man. Now, did uh, Craig Signorelli, <clears throat> uh, after the death of uh, Jose and Kitty Menendez, did he tell you anything about uh, making money or selling rights to the Menendez story? Yes, he said he had sold the rights to the story to his lawyer. And did he tell you how much he sold it for? I remember him mentioning something like he could make millions or, you know, something to that effect. Something, a, a lot of money. And do you know if he made, did he, did he make the statement to you before or after um, Eric was arrested? I believe it was before.
Now, Mr. Whalen, since the time that Eric was arrested, you visited him in the jail, have you not? Yes, ma'am. And on how many occasions have you visited him? Three or four. And the testimony that you've given us here today, is that based on your memory? Yes, ma'am. And were you interviewed, in addition to the interview that you gave to the Beverly Hills Police in October of 1990, were you also interviewed in November of 1990 by the defense investigator, Ms. Erdely? Yes, ma'am. I have nothing further. Thank you. You indicated that uh, you went to pick up Eric Menendez on the 1st of September? Yes, sir. Did you, what car did you drive? I drove my mother's car. Okay. And you had been, uh, you had received a call from Eric Menendez before uh, going to the airport? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir. You had been told um, where the airline and, and where to pick him up? Yes, sir. Where did you receive the call? Was that home? Yes, sir. Now, you indicated that you went to the Beverly Hills home first. You yep. had to pick up uh, or meet with a security guard? Yes, sir. Had you ever been to 722 North Elm? Yes, sir. And how many times had you been there previous to that date? Five times. Now, prior to learning of the, the murders of the Menendezes, you had not seen Eric Menendez for some two months, is that correct? That is correct. Now, when you received this call from Eric Menendez telling you where to go, and you got into your mother's car and went to Elm, their, their home on Elm Street, uh, who was there? Um, a few security guards, I guess. They were not police officers uh, inside. What time was it that you arrived? I don't recall. Was it morning or was it night? Af uh, Afternoonish, probably noontime, I'd say. Do you recall how many guards were there? Two to three. I remember uh, specifically two. Did they have uniforms on? Yes, sir. Now, at some point, you were told to just leave. Is that right? Yes, sir. So you, you said that you called your home? Yes, sir. Where did you call from? <laughs> I went, um, the only place I could find a public phone was all the way back to Sunset and down at a gas station a ways. After calling your mother, you then went to the airport? Yes, sir. Which airport did you go to? Uh, LAX. And which airline did you go to? Uh, I don't recall. And you were the only person in the car? Yes, sir. At some point, you went to an airline and you found Eric Menendez, is that right? Uh, it was in the baggage claim. And after you met up with Eric Menendez, what did you do? We, we went back to Elm. Is, is that what you're asking? Yes, you drove back to Elm. Yes, sir. And what time was this? Um, I believe I left an hour early to get to his house, so probably one or two in the afternoon. Now, when you got there at one or two, were the same uh, guards there? Um, I, I don't recall. I, I, I seem to remember one, one had at least not been the same. They changed at least one guard. Did you enter into the house? Yes, sir with Eric Menendez? Yes, sir. Where did you go? Well, we tried to go in through the front, but the wrought iron gates, they, they we were about ready to climb over, and they, they wouldn't let us in, so we went around through the back, through the alleyway, up through the house, by the pool, and then in the doors there. You went through the back gate? Yes, sir. Did the uh, guards come to you when you came through the gate? 
they're actually standing in the hallway and we approach them. I mean, they, they couldn't believe how we got in the house, but we'd gotten in that way. Which doors did you enter into the house? I believe it was the, the side doors that led in, into the family room there that were... The, the French doors? Yes, sir. Were they still broken? Um, yeah, I, from what I remember, I, I remember parts of the door being missing. Okay. Or... Yeah. When you went into the, uh, the family room, uh, was it your understanding is that that is where the killings took place? Well, I'm going to object to this as beyond the scope of the relevant. You can ask a question. Uh, yes, sir. Was there still blood on the walls? Not that I, I didn't take a good look at it. There, there was nothing. It was it was basically cleaned out the, the the middle of the of the family room. I, I didn't take a good look. At some point, uh, did Eric Menendez go up to his bedroom? Yes, I went with him. And you went with him? Yes, sir. And what happened? Um, we were checking his messages. Um, Does he have his own phone? Uh, yes, I believe or he did. did. He at that time? Yes, sir. Now, after checking his messages, did you actually sit there and listen to the messages? Uh, yes, a few of them. Yes, sir. So you were with him at all times? Yes, while we were upstairs, yes, sir. Did he collect some clothes? Um, yes, yes, I believe a, a few. No nothing major. We had already had the bulk of his things in the car. So he kept his suitcases in your car? Yeah, we, we didn't bring them into the house when we went in. No. At some point, did the doorbell ring when you were upstairs? I remember being upstairs and needing to meet somebody at the foot of the stairs. I mean... What do you mean, foot of the stairs? Well, his, his room was upstairs and we were upstairs and... Somebody said, come downstairs. We met somebody at the foot of the stairs and went back to his parents' room, up to his parents' room. So you and Eric came down the stairs and somebody was already in the house at the base of the stairs? With the security guards, yes, that is correct. Do you recall what this person looked like? I just remember a male. Uh, what race? Oh, well, white. He's how, how tall? No idea. I just remember a, a, a white male we met and then went right upstairs. Remember what color of hair he had? No, sir, I do not. Remember what color eyes he had? No, sir. Remember what he was wearing? No, sir. Now, he was with uh, the security guards, the uniform guards? Yes, sir. And at that point, what happened? We went up into the parents' room. When you say we, who are you talking about? Eric, myself, and the computer man. And did you enter into uh, a room upstairs? Yes, sir. Which room? The parents' room. And what did you see? There was a bed there. There were kind of clothes all over the all, the, all over the ground, and uh, against what would be, I guess, the right wall. After you come in and look at the room, there is the computer is there. And this and is what I remember from what was in the room. As you enter the room, the computer is on the right wall. Is that correct? Uh, yes, a, as I remember. So it would be to your right as you enter into the room. Yes, sir. Was it uh, up against that right wall? As I remember, yes, sir. And uh, you were actually watching as this person was uh, working on the computer? Yes, I, I had a tennis ball. I was kind of milling around. I remember at one point Eric and I just trying to, the, the man couldn't figure out what was going on with the computer, and Eric and I were watching him. And then I went back to just doing whatever I was doing. And what were you doing? <laughs> just milling around. I, I wasn't doing anything in particular. Were you milling around in the uh, mother and father's bedroom? Yeah, I, I didn't leave the room. I was just, I was a few feet away. I just had a tennis ball. I wasn't doing a whole lot. How long was this gentleman there? I, I, I don't recall the, the duration of time that he was there. I just remember the actual event of us being in the room w with the computer. I don't remember the exact amount of time. And you don't remember anyone else being there with you? No, sir, I do not. Now, the whole time that this man was uh, working on this computer, were you actually in the bedroom? Yes, sir. Just playing with his tennis ball? Yes, sir. The and whole time? Not the whole time while they were there. Then I ended up leaving and going downstairs to the car. At what point did you do that? I, I don't remember. It was, it was where they were basically at the end, because Eric came out about five minutes later, two, four minutes later, to meet me at the car, and we left. So at some point, you went out to your car, and a few minutes later, Eric Menendez came out? Yes, sir. Were there ever any calls made while you were there in, in the bedroom? Not that I recall, sir. Did you ever show this man around the house? 
Not that I recall. What do you recall? I remember being in the house, in his room, checking messages, meeting somebody at the foot of the stairs, being in the parents' bedroom, looking over somebody's shoulder on the computer while somebody worked on the computer. Eric couldn't believe what was going on. I went down the car, got the car ready, we left, and we went home. <clears throat> what is your best estimate of how long the computer man was there? Half an hour, 45 minutes. Estimate. Do you ever, do you remember ever seeing the man in any other part of the house besides being in the location that you saw him, the parents' bedroom, after coming up the stairs? No, I, I, I don't recall. And I, you were only out of Eric Menendez's presence for a couple of minutes while you went out to the car, is that correct? To, to the best of my knowledge, yes, sir, okay. from what I remember. Now, when you were playing with this tennis ball, where, where physically were you with respect to this, uh, man that's working on the computer on the right side of the room? Um, at the foot of the bed, uh, maybe maybe five, ten feet away. You weren't actually on the bed? I, I'd, I'd sat down for a second, but I mean, for while I was up there, I looked over his shoulder a few times to figure out what they were doing, and I had a tennis ball, and I was just walking around the room. I didn't do anything in particular. While you were walking around, uh, you, did you pace around the room? I wasn't pacing. I was just waiting for them to get done what he needed to get done. Did Eric Menendez uh, appear to be quite interested in what was going on with that computer? Yes, sir. Did he stand there at all times while this man was working on the computer? From what I remember, yes, sir. Was he looking over this man's shoulder the entire time? From what I remember, for, for most of it, yes, sir. I remember talking to uh, the Beverly Hills detectives in October of 1990, on October 3rd. Yes, sir. Uh, you never mentioned anything about a computer person on that date, did you? Excuse me, sir? You never mentioned anything about a computer person on that date. No, sir. No, I did not. In fact, you had indicated on that date, did you not, sir, on October 3rd, 1990, that Eric had asked you to be a character witness for him and you were due to visit him in jail to further discuss things with him. Do you remember that? Yes, sir. Well, that was kind of taken out of context. I had come is down. That, is that what you said? Yeah, I said I had said that uh, Eric, do you need any help? Do you need me to be a character witness? And he said, I don't know. Yeah, I might. Okay. The statement that you made uh, on October third, nineteen ninety, was that Eric had I asked you. The form of the question was since the witness is saying that the report is right, not accurate. Let's not argue it. Uh, yeah, approach. Let me hear the, uh, okay. the question. Mr. Whelan, would it refresh your present recollection to take a look at the report that you gave to the uh, Beverly Hills Homicide Detectives on October 3rd, 1990? I, I've, I've seen it. I remember it says that Eric had asked me to be a character witness, which was actually an indirect, I mean, indirectly he did ask me because I offered and he said, yeah, so I took it as, yeah, he asked me to be a character witness. And. In fact, you had a, a meeting with him, or you indicated on October 3rd, 1990, that you were going to meet with Eric Menendez in jail to discuss what you testified to. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I mean, okay. what I remember. Yes, sir. Now, did you have some kind of a rivalry with uh, Craig Signorelli that you wanted to be Eric Menendez's best friend? I believe Craig and I at different times thought we were closer to Eric than, than the other was, so that, that could be accurate, yes, sir. And you wanted to be known as Eric's best friend? Wasn't uh, a priority with me, no, but I felt like when he left for Beverly Hills that Eric and I were closer than Craig and he were at the time. So that, that, that was important for you to, to feel that you were closer to Eric Menendez than Craig was? No, that wasn't important to me. It was important to me that Eric and I were close, and Craig and I have a totally different relationship. So, no, I mean, it was important that Eric and I were still close while he left, because I felt he was a good friend of mine. And being a good friend, you uh, went to visit him in jail and talked about the case? That'd be fair to say? 
Um, no, not really, because I was warned before that whatever we would talk about would be taped. So actually, I don't think we talked about much of it at all. And if I had any questions, I might have written them down, and that was it. So I don't think we talked about much of it. He asked what I was doing with my life, and I asked him how he was doing. That was probably about what we talked about. Okay, let's get back to if you had something perhaps uh, you didn't want people to know about, you'd write it on a piece of paper while you were visiting, is that correct? The, the question I had written down was, do you want me to be a character witness? Because I didn't know if that was a good question to ask on tape. Okay. And did you hold up that message to Eric Menendez? Yes, sir. Did he answer audibly, or did he write his answer out to you? It was more or less what I just said that, oh, uh, yeah, well, I might, I need you. I don't, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I might need you to be a character witness. Something he, to that he effect. Said that, um, himself. He didn't write it out. From what I remember, it was kind of like he shrugged it off as he was on the phone. Well, yeah, maybe, or something like that. How many times had you visited uh, Eric Menendez prior to when the Beverly Hills Homicide Detectives interviewed you on October 3rd, 1990? Uh, it might have been twice that memorial that Memorial Day, and if it wasn't that Memorial Day, then I hadn't seen him at all. I, I'd seen him over Memorial Weekend two days in a row. I'd gone down there, and I don't recall if it was of 90 or of 91, so I, I don't recall, sir. Well, if the interview took place on October 3rd of uh, 1990, you would have visited uh, with Eric Menendez um, that, that the May, previous then. Memorial? Yeah, that would have been the weekend. two days. And how many times was that? Twice, back-to-back -back days. And uh, I believe you indicated that you had visited him several times over the course of uh, the pendency of this case. Is that right? Uh, I said three or four times. Okay, so you went uh, perhaps twice after you gave uh, the detectives the information on October 3rd, 1990? Definitely once, and, and there might have been another time in there. Now, you indicated that you found out that Mr. and Mrs. Menendez had been murdered sometime in August of uh, 1989. Yeah, my family was sitting around and saw it on TV. That was, I'd walked in on it. And you went to the uh, memorial service, correct? You, you, yes, sir. And yes, that sir. was on a Friday? The 25th, yes, sir. And this was at the uh, Screen Actors Guild? Is that what you said? I, I believe that's the name of the building. It was on Sunset Boulevard. Did Eric Menendez uh, speak at this memorial service? Yes, he and his brother did. Now, you indicated that after the memorial service that uh, you went to the hotel, the Bel Air Hotel? Yes, sir. And uh, what did you do at the hotel? Did you, did you hang around with uh, Eric Menendez and two other people? I think two other people you indicated? Yeah, um, Robin Rosenblum and, and Andy Pierce were there as well, yes. Before what, did you, what did you do after the memorial service with Eric Menendez? We, we, we sat, we talked a little bit about what was going on, what he needed to do back in New Jersey. We uh, sat in a jacuzzi, it was outside, and uh, talked about what, what we were going to do. I mean, what he needed to do while he was back in New Jersey. That was about the duration of the night. Had, had a little something to eat took Lyle to the airport. That was basically what I did while I was there. Now, you indicated that uh, Eric Menendez had made a statement that you overheard at the memorial service. Is it's that correct? Sustained. Did you hear Eric Menendez say anything with regard to uh, the people who had killed his parents? Yes, that was yes, that was what I talked about earlier at the Bel Air Hotel. Okay, and what is it that he said? Something to the effect of, if I find out who who killed my parents, I'm going to have to go to jail because I'm going to kill them. Now, had you seen Eric Menendez with his uh, with his parents over the course of this year that you knew Eric Menendez? Yes, sir. Your 11th grade year. Yes, sir. Had you seen the parents come to his tennis um, matches? That is correct, sir, yes. What, what exactly did you see about that relationship? No, I'm going to check with you on the scope. Overall. Could, could you restate the question? Yes, you indicated that you saw Mr. and Mrs. Menendez uh, go to tennis matches that Eric Menendez had? Yes, sir, that is correct. And what, what did you see about the relationship between his parents and uh, Eric Menendez? 
Um, well, they, they went to most, uh, and his mother went to all of his tennis matches. His father would go when he could. Um, his, his father paced back and forth, and his mother sat and watched most of the time. How would you characterize uh, Eric Menendez's uh, relationship with his mother during that period of time that you knew him? Uh, from what I knew, it was, it was good. Now, prior to October 3rd, 1990, you had spoken to Craig Signorelli, correct? Yes, sir. About uh, the killings of uh, Mr. and Mrs. Menendez. Yes, sir. Did Ron, he? I'm going to object to that as calling for hearsay. At this point, the question has just been asked uh, without the content. The objection is overruled. The answer will stand. You also indicated that, that while Eric Menendez was staying at your house, that Craig Signale Signorelli would come by. Is that correct? Yes, he'd come over a couple times. Yes, sir. That's correct. You'd come over a couple of times? Two or three times. I don't recall the exact number, but it, it was a couple of times. Uh, do you recall telling uh, the detectives from Beverly Hills that while Eric stayed at your house, that Eric spent a lot of time with Craig Signorelli? That was after I left. Uh, he stayed at my house for another uh, five or seven days after I left for school. So, and my mother had told me that they'd been spending a lot of time together, so that would be an accurate statement, yes, sir. Were you upset at that? No, it didn't bother me. I mean, I was off at school. I was in a new element. Now, these days that uh, Eric Menendez was with you, um, you say September 1st being the first day, was he with you at all times during that period of time when you were at home and before you left for Santa Barbara City College? Not, not at all times, no, sir. Okay. How, uh, for example, the, the first day, September 1st, did he spend the entire evening with you? Yes, sir, because we'd gotten home um, after we'd gotten everything at the house. We went to dinner with my, my sister, my mom, and, and Eric and myself. And then we kind of laid low that night and, and went to bed. So that night, yes, I, I, I believe, as I recall that, we spent the whole night. He was there the whole night. Okay. Uh, when you were at the Beverly Hills home, was Lyle Menendez there? No, sir. Was it your understanding that Lyle Menendez, Menendez was back east in New Jersey at that time? My understanding, yes, sir. Now, you said that you went to dinner um, that night, the 1st of September. Yes, sir. And Eric Menendez slept over your house? Yes, sir. Where did he sleep? Um, next, next to my bed. Uh, we made, made up a bed for him right there, right there. Just the two of you in your bedroom? Yes, sir. Now, the next day, what happened? I don't, I don't recall. It was four years ago. I mean, I, I remember him being there for most of the time. I don't recall a, a actual events. You don't remember spending the whole day on the second with him? No, sir. How about the third? I don't remember spending the whole day with him, no. No, sir. I, I, I don't remember the exact day. I was getting ready to go to school. I was out buying things, doing things, so I, I don't recall. So when you were out buying things, would... Um would Eric Menendez be doing other things? He wasn't with you all the time, in other words. No, he wasn't with me all the time, everywhere I went, no, sir. When you went shopping for your uh, trip to Santa, Ma or, uh, Santa Barbara City College, did he go with you? Some he might have gone a few times. I know he didn't go with us every time. I don't recall the exact events. So you were pretty busy? Somewhat. I mean, yeah. I still always made time to, to hang around and do a whole lot of nothing, so, I mean. How about the fourth? Do you remember what happened? I don't recall exact events. No, I don't remember what happened exactly. So when you were off doing your own thing, you don't know what Eric Menendez was doing. Would that be fair to say? Yes, sir. Now, did Eric Menendez have a car? Yes, sir. And uh, what kind of car did he have during that period of time? His escort. And were there other cars at the house in Beverly Hills that day that you went? I, I don't recall. that. I, I remember, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what cars were there. How was Eric Menendez getting around during this period of time? Was he driving his car? Yeah, he had his escort, which we took out to my, uh, out to his, out to my house as well. So the day that uh, you brought Eric Menendez back on the 1st of September, Eric Menendez drove his own car to your house? 
From what I remember him having his car at my house. I don't remember the exact events. I remember him having his escort with him at, at my house. When do you recall that taking place? I just said I don't recall. I don't remember exactly when. I remember him having his escort at my house during that week so he could get around. And I, you know, when I was out doing my things, he wasn't just stuck there. So I don't recall. During the evenings, would you, um, would you ever go out with friends? Yes, During sir. During this period of time, yes. September 1st through? Yes, sir. And uh, Eric Menendez didn't always go with you to be with your friends. Is that fair to say? That is correct. So you don't know where he was during some of these nights? No, no, sir. I mean, uh, maybe a night or two he, he did his own thing. I know a couple nights we, we did things together, so. But I know a couple nights I did my own thing, so that, that's accurate. At some point, getting back to Craig Signorelli, at some point did you have a discussion with Craig Signorelli about the killings of Mr. and Mrs. Menendez? Uh, Sometime. Was just asked and answered and I made a hearsay. Did you wish to be heard? Yes. Okay, let me approach. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a short break. As far as you're concerned, I want to discuss something a little more fully with the lawyers. Um, all right, we'll proceed with the cross-examination. Uh, would you state your name again for the record, please? Uh, Kevin Christopher Whalen, Casey, is my nickname. Okay, Mr. Whalen, I'll remind you you're still under oath. Yes, sir. All right, uh, you may continue your examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Whalen, when is it that you first visited uh, Defendant Eric Menendez in jail? I believe it was around the time of Memorial Weekend of um, what would be 90. 1990? Yes, sir. And how many times did you visit him? Uh, twice. I believe it was either back-to-back -back days or one day, a break, and then the next day it was... I'm, I'm almost... I, I think it was back-to-back -back days. I'm not quite sure. And after that, those visits, when did you next visit? Um, it would be January of 93, around the 12th or 13th with Mrs. Abramson. Ms. Abramson. That's a total of three times? Yes, sir. Uh, did you testify yesterday in a, in a hearing outside the presence of the jury? I'm going to object to running the foundation. <clears throat> Overruled to that question, obviously. It's, it's foundational at this point. Did you, did you testify yesterday? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, in that hearing, did you state that you had made more visits than that? I said... Did you on the state's testimony? Overruled. I said three or four times. I wasn't quite sure, I believe. You never visited in 1991 or 1992? No, sir. In your statement on October the 3rd, 1990, as you testified yesterday, that Eric Menendez had asked you to be a character witness and you were due to visit Eric Menendez in the jail, uh, and you will further discuss the matter with him. Did you not go and visit him after that October 3rd uh, report? I did not. I, I wanted to and I never did. Did you ever receive any phone calls at your home from Eric Menendez? No, sir. Now, on October 3rd, 1990, uh, you gave a statement to the Beverly Hills Police Department, correct? Yes, sir. And in that statement, uh, did you relate information that you had received from Craig Signorelli? Object to the form of the question, Your Honor. Sustain. Rephrase the question, please. Did uh, Craig Signorelli, prior to your interview on October 3rd, 1990, tell you about the murders of Mr. and Mrs. Menendez? I believe, like I said yesterday, between sometime between um, when I was in Santa Barbara between September and January, Craig had told me, and I've also heard from other people, that, that he'd, he'd said that Eric had admitted it to him that he had killed his parents, as I stated yesterday. And that was between September of 1989 and January of 1990? Yes, sir, while I was in Santa Barbara before I left for Connecticut. Can you be any more specific? No, sir, I cannot. As yesterday, you asked me a few different times, and I just said I, I wasn't, I couldn't put a finger on it. I just don't remember exactly when it was. 
Do you know who was present when the statement was related to you by uh, Craig Signorelli? No, sir, I do not. Now, getting back to the day that uh, you supposedly picked up Eric Menendez from the airport. Yes, sir. You indicated that you uh, got to the house, that you went upstairs to his bedroom, correct? Yes, sir. That uh, Eric Menendez got some clothes? Yes, sir. Correct? Yeah, checked his messages. Checked his messages, made no phone calls? That I remember, no. You testified yesterday he made no phone calls. Is that correct? Rephrase the question, please. Did Eric Menendez make any phone calls? I said none that I remembered yesterday. When you asked me if he'd made any phone calls while we were checking the computer, I said, not that I remember. Well, we were checking the computer. When you, that what when I just you said? checked his, his phone messages when you first got to the house, you indicated he, he made no return calls. No. Is that correct? Right, correct. Uh, correct. And you don't recall if the computer man made a phone call? I don't remember. And the only time you were out of the presence of Eric Menendez was a few minutes uh, before you actually left? Yes, sir. From what I remember, yes, sir. And while the computer person was in the bedroom, uh, you were there the whole time, correct? In the bedroom, yes, sir. And you were, you said the bed was five feet away? Uh, I said five to ten feet. I, I didn't know exact measurements. It was about that. And you were playing with the tennis ball that whole time? And Well, I stopped and looked over his shoulder to see what they were doing. Uh, and then I just kind of was waiting for them to get done with what they were doing. Yesterday you had indicated that Eric Menendez had his uh, Ford Escort at your house. Yes, sir. Do you recall when the car uh, was there? Yeah, we went back and got it uh, the next day. That's what you recall now? Yes, sir. Because I went back and I, I wanted to make sure that I, I remembered that I was telling the right story. So I just wanted to make sure that I knew his car was there and I went back and got it the next day. Because I went and talked to my sister about it last night. I just wanted to make sure I was telling the right story. Telling the right story. I just want to tell the truth, sir. And yesterday I'd said the car was there and I, and I knew he had his car during the week, so I took him back the next day to get it. And you recall that because your sister told you that? No, I said, Katie, Eric had his car. And she goes, yeah, you, you remember taking him to get his car at the Beverly Hills house? And I said, was that the next day? And she said, yeah. And my mom said the same thing. So it's just after four years, a lot of these things, you know, I just wanted to make sure I was telling the right story when I got up here. You, you didn't recall that yesterday? No, sir. I said his car was there during the week, and I wasn't quite sure how it got there because he and I rode back the original day to my house together in my mom's car, and I took him to get it the next day. Who was with you? The next day? Yes. Just he and I. And what time was that? I have no idea. Sometime after we got up, maybe we caught lunch. I, I don't remember. It was four years ago. The day that you picked up Eric Menendez, you specifically remember, remember that particular day? I remember events like I stated yesterday. Yes, sir. What do you remember about that day? Objection, Why don't you rephrase the question? What specifically do you recall about the day that you picked up Eric Menendez? No, I'd That's a little too broad, Mr. Okay. What do you remember about after you left the room, the computer room, that day? I, I walked down out to the car. Eric came out about four minutes later with a few things in his hands. We went home. We had, we had dinner with my sister and my mother and Eric and myself. We went to bed. That's what I remember from the day. And what time is it that you left? The um, house? I, I have no idea. I, I said that his flight had maybe gotten in at noon. We were at the house at 2. I, I don't remember. Maybe. Th I, I have no idea. It was four years ago. I don't, I don't even remember the, the events. flight arrived at uh, LAX at, at noon? I believe so. And it took how long to get to Beverly Hills from LAX? Um... I have no idea. By the time we got his, his bags and got there, I don't know if there was traffic. I, I just don't remember. I mean, some days it could probably take a half an hour, some days an hour with traffic. I just don't know what the traffic was like that day. I just don't remember those specific events. You had indicated yesterday that you were there with the computer man 
from about 30 to 45 minutes, is that right? Yes, sir. And when you left out of the room, you left the computer man with Eric Menendez, is that right? Yes, sir, I believe I left a few minutes before he came down to see me. Okay. Did you go to your car in the front of the house? Yes, sir, I uh, well, well, got out to the car there. Okay, and um, was it uh, parked in the driveway or on the street? It was parked uh, 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 on the other side of the street. On, on the, it was just parked on that side of the street. In the front of the house? Yes, sir. When you saw Eric Menendez uh, come out a few minutes after you left, did he have a little bag with him? I don't remember specifically. I just remember he needed to pick up some clothes because he needed a few extra things, a few notes. I wasn't quite sure. So I don't remember specifically what he had in his hand. When you left the, the bedroom with the computer, did you say, Eric, I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to be in the car waiting for you? More or less something to that effect. I don't remember specifically what I said. Did you know at that time how long it would take the computer man to finish his job? Um, I believe I wouldn't have gone, I mean, I th figured they were wrapping up whatever they were doing, that it was, you know, I was just like, well, you know, I'm sure you'll be down in a few minutes, whatever. I, I didn't know what they needed to talk about, and I figured it was probably towards the end of what they were doing. Now, were you parked on the side of the street closest to the house or the opposite side? Opposite side. Okay. Did you look toward the house, the front of the house, and see Eric Menendez exit the, the front doors? I th may maybe I mean I'm sure by the time I was getting in the car maybe I saw him standing by the car I mean I was I'm going to object and you just start the answer as speculation. Objection sustained the answer is correct. At some point you went down to your car which was parked in the front of the house and you were waiting for Eric Menendez to come correct? Yes sir. And at some point you saw him coming. Yeah I, I mean I, I don't know I might have been uh, okay. in the car. Answer is speculation. Um, sir, I, I don't remember specifically what happened. I could have been turning the stereo, moving the car so Eric could sit down. I just don't specifically. I might have looked at him. I might have not. I might have been turning the car around, and by the time he was at the door, opening the door. So I just don't know whether I was looking at him or I never even looked at him. But by the time I'd opened the door, I'd turn the car around, and he was standing right there to get in. So I might not have even seen him walk out. I moved to strike all of that as speculation. All right. Objection sustained. The answer is correct. I want you to pursue it if you care to. Mr. Whalen, after you left out, did you leave out the front door? Objection, Your Honor. This has been asked and answered. Overruled. Did you leave out the front door? Yes, sir. Through the, through the gates. And then went through the front gates and then got to your car. And a couple minutes later, Eric was at your car. You don't know how he got there, but he was there. Is that right? I object to the question of the state's evidence. Overruled. You can answer that. Is that correct, Mr. Whalen? Uh, one, once again, I, I don't recall the actual events leading up to Eric being in the car. Okay, you just recall somehow getting in the car. Right? Exactly. The next thing I knew, we were on our way back to my house, so I don't remember. And your recollection was it was a couple minutes later? Yes, from what I remember. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, this next day uh, would have been September 2nd. That's yes, correct. You supposedly drove Eric back to his house in Beverly Hills? Yes, sir. And you don't recall what time that was? No, sir. Whether it was morning or night? I, I would believe it was afternoonish again. I said we probably woke up, maybe had lunch or something, and I took him to get his car. I, I don't recall. Did Eric Menendez have his keys with him to his car? I, I, f I guess he must have if he was going to pick up his car to drive it. I mean, he might have, I might have taken him to the house and he might have got the keys from inside. I don't recall. I just knew that I had to get him to his house so he could pick up his car. Okay. Let's just stay on that subject then. When you drove him to his house in Beverly Hills, did you wait for him to get his car? I don't remember. Did you go somewhere with him after you got his car? I don't remember. You do remember that you took him to get his car? Uh, well, I remembered he needed his car for the week because I had errands to run, like I talked about yesterday, to get ready for school. And that, you know, so I took him to get his car. I don't remember events leading up to or right after that. So you don't know if he stayed at his house then? I believe he left when I left. I, I, I just don't know, sir. That same day, did you see Eric Menendez at your house? 
Um, I, I believe so. I, I don't remember specific events against her. I, I just don't. From from that from that instance, I mean, he was in, he was at my house for up until I left for school, and then I left for school. So, you know, we we spent time. We watched movies together with my family. We went out a night. You know, I went out one other night with some of my other friends. I just don't remember specifically what happened each day there. It was it was four years ago. Lots happened. You know, I just don't remember. So it's possible that he wasn't there a couple of nights, as far as you know. Like I talked about yesterday, uh, Eric and I went. Back to the question today, whether it's the person before the witness went back to school or after. Overall, your answer. The question one more time. As far as you know, during the period of time that you were there. Okay. Uh, September first through the fifth, I believe you said. Right. You don't know if Eric Menendez was was there at night. Yes, because I had gone out with him a few nights, like I just said, and we watched a movie one night. But I remember one night I did not go out with him because I went out with some of my other friends before I left for school. So you don't know where he was on that particular night? No, nope, I didn't, didn't ha know where he was that night. Did you receive calls from Eric Menendez while he was staying at your house? In Santa Barbara? No. In uh, Agora. Yeah. Did you receive, well, Eric was supposedly staying at your house during this period of time, September yes, sir. 1st through the 5th. Right. Did you receive phone calls from him? Um, he was staying at my house, sir. I, I, I didn't, not, not to my knowledge. I mean, I, I was either with him or he was out. I mean, I don't believe he called my house if he was staying there, so not, not that I remember. break and give uh, council a chance to review the records and um, we'll resume at 10 minutes after the hour ladies and gentlemen don't discuss the case with anyone don't form any final opinions about it and we'll resume at 10 minutes after what do you need me to do sir uh, why don't you stay there until the jurors leave and then you can get down okay and just wait right out, wait out there oh, you can take a seat the right there yeah okay is it a blank piece of paper that you want somebody to write something on? Okay, it'll be 214. <coughs> yes. Mr. Whalen, I'm going to give you a, what's now a blank sheet, except for it says Exhibit uh, 214 in the right uh, upper corner. I'm going to ask you to write down the phone numbers to your house where you're living in Agora uh, during September of 1989, if you will. Yes, sir. Oops. There you go. There are two numbers? Yes, sir. Can you just sign your name? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> uh, Mr. Whalen, getting back to what Eric, Menen Eric Menendez had told Craig Signorelli, as related to you by Craig Signorelli, sometime between September of 1989 and January of 1990. What exactly did Craig Signorelli tell you? Overall. Well, what did he tell me or, or yes. what did I, okay, from, from Craig just, um, from what I remember it was more or less Eric had admitted to me that, that he had killed his parents. Now at that point you were a friend of Craig Signorelli's? Yes, sir. You were also a friend of Eric Menendez's? Yes, sir. Eric Menendez was still on the streets during that period of time, correct? Yes, sir. He wasn't arrested until March of 1990, correct? Yes, sir. Did you uh, call Eric Menendez up and tell him what you had heard from Craig Signorelli? No, sir. You did not? Not from what I remember, no, sir. Why not? Didn't you I want... Overall. 
did you want Eric Menendez to know uh, what was being said about the, the murders? I didn't know where he was living. Had you ever been to his condominium in the Marina City Club? No, sir. In Marina Del Rey? No, sir. At some point, did you learn of that fact? Objection on the one time. So say it. At some point, did you learn that uh, Eric Menendez was living in a condominium in the Marina City Club? Well, I don't object to characterization. Overall. Um, after the fact, after I'd heard on the news, after the boys had been arrested, I'd... I'd Objection, Your Honor, Kansas. All right, the question, objection sustained, the answer is stricken. The question was, did you ever hear he was living somewhere? I, no, I, I didn't know what he was doing. At some point, did you learn that Eric Menendez was living in a condominium in Marina Del Rey? Your Honor, the calls for hearsay. Overall. Not till after he was arrested. I didn't know anything about Marina Del Rey until they were arrested. So when you gave that information to the police, that was in October of 1990. That was after the arrest, correct? Yes, sir. I mean, that I learned that they had a place in Marina Del Rey, yeah. So during that period of time, you didn't know where your best friend was living? A best friend? I, I never, he was a good friend of mine, yes, sir. Now, at some point, you learned that he had been arrested, correct? Yes, sir. Was that in March of 1990? Yes, sir. And in fact, you went to visit him at the jail in May of 1990, correct? Overall. Yes, when I, well, I was in Connecticut when they were arrested, and when I got home, it was a few weeks later after I'd gotten back. This Memorial Day weekend? Yes, sir. You went twice to the jail to visit Eric Menendez? Yes, sir. Of course, you told him what uh, Craig Signorelli had told you. Objection argumentative. Rephrase the question, please. Did you tell Eric Menendez at that point what Craig Signorelli had told you months earlier? No, sir. Now, based on what you have uh, testified to, uh, Eric Menendez said he was going to kill the persons that killed his parents, correct? What I had over... Your objection? Well, this states the evidence. Rephrase the question, please. Yes, I, I believe you testified that when, after the memorial service in Los Angeles, uh, you went to the Bel Air Hotel, correct? Yes, sir. And you spent the night uh, there with Eric Menendez and two <coughs> other of your friends. Is that correct? Three other. Three other friends? Yes, sir. And you spent uh, most of the night in the jacuzzi? Uh, in and around the jacuzzi. That wasn't the gist of the night. Again, like I said, we needed to take Lyle to the airport. Other things occurred during the night. We ate. So, but most of the time, as you've indicated, uh, was spent in the jacuzzi. Is that correct? Objection. The state's testimony. Overall. No, we didn't spend most of the night in the jacuzzi. We spent some time in the jacuzzi. Did you state uh, on October third that you spent most of the night in and around the jacuzzi? In and around, right? That doesn't necessarily mean in the jacuzzi. Yes, Did sir. Did you bring your swimming trunks with you that day? Objection, Your Honor. Robinson. No. Were you in the jacuzzi? Yes, sir. Boxers. Boxers. Was Eric Menendez in the jacuzzi? Yes, sir. And did he have his swimming trunks on? I don't recall, sir. I, yes. I mean, it's some sort of undergarment on, yes, sir. Okay. So, were you sipping, uh, sipping champagne in this jacuzzi? Objection, Your Honor. Overall. No, sir. Were you drinking? No, sir, no. Was it during this period of time that you heard Eric Menendez make the statement about killing the people that had killed his parents? Uh, there were four or five of us having a conversation, like, like I stated yesterday, I'd overheard that, the gist of it. Was that while you were sitting in the jacuzzi? I don't recall. It could have been? Yes, sir. Now, when you visited uh, Eric Menendez in May of 1990, did you go alone? No, sir. Who was with you? The first day I went, I went with a friend whose father was down there. In, in I'm, I'm sorry. What was the that? first day I went, I went with a friend whose father was in jail. Yes. And uh, the next day or two days later, whenever I went, I was with my sister. This friend whose father was in jail, 
did he go and visit his father while you were visiting Eric Menendez? No, he couldn't. He came to see Eric because he knew Eric from, high, from my high school as well. So you sat in together? Yes, sir. Did you write any notes to Eric Menendez during either of these two visits? Yes, sir. And did you write notes to Eric Menendez? Yes, sir. Did you get any notes in return? No, sir. How did he respond to you, uh, to your notes? Well, we knew that everything we talked about was going to be taped, so it was either, I mean, I, I wrote one, one sentence and it was either a nod or a, a shrug, so. So what you were talking about, you didn't want the authorities to know about? Well, the one question I asked him, um, and I, it was actually, it said, do you want me to stand trial for you? And he just kind of shrugged like he didn't know at the time, so it was something along that line. During that particular meeting, was that uh, with your friend or with your sister? That was with my sister when I had the note. At some point during that particular meeting, did uh, Eric Menendez tell you, yeah, I want you to be a witness for me? No, sir. Like I said before, he kind of shrugged and, and he didn't know what, what the state of the case was. And that was the second time that you had visited Eric Menendez then, correct? That was, yeah, that was when I was with my sister, correct. And the only other time that you ever talked to him and actually have a face-to-face -face visit with him was in January of 1993? After that fact, yes, with Mrs. Abramson. Now, why is it that on October 3rd, 1990, you told the police that Eric had asked you to be a character witness for, for him? Um, when I wrote him the note, I didn't know what standing trial meant, whether he wanted me. I was just, he was a friend of mine, and I wanted to help him out any way I could. I didn't know what the actual <coughs> title of what he, you know, I just wanted to help out a friend. So I'd ask him if he wanted me to stand trial. The question is, during that meeting, you discussed being a witness for him, and he never said, yeah, I want you to be a witness. Yet. This is a statement that you made to the police on October 3rd, 1990, that he had asked you to be a witness for him? I said that he had shrugged, like kind of, well, yeah, I don't know, and that's what I had said here. So I took it as, yeah, I guess Eric's going to maybe need my help to be a character witness. I have nothing further at this time, Your Honor. Redirect. That piece of paper, Your Honor, rather crumpled. Which I'd like to mark because the next one is 215. Yes. Mr. Whalen, do you recognize item 215? Yes, ma'am. It's it's my writing. I haven't asked you yet. Okay. Slow down. All right. What is item 215? It is the note that I brought with me that day uh, that I wrote on to Eric. Okay. Break that down. <clears throat> did you bring a note to the visit already written out, or did you write the note out while you were visiting Eric? While I was visiting Eric. And is that the note you wrote that day? Yes, ma'am. Why did you keep it? That's just the kind of person I am. I have every shirt I've had since. I, I just I just keep things. I just, I, I guess. I mean, some people are neat freaks. I'm just, yeah, I guess I am. That's just. And it's all crumpled up, that piece of paper. How did it get crumpled up? It was stuffed away in a drawer, and I actually just found it at the beginning of last month. And when did you give it to me? This morning. And when did you tell me you still had it? <laughs> last night. I didn't know if I still had it. I had to go check my drawer. And you found it last night in your drawer? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Now, that piece of paper, what, would you just read the first word that's on that piece of paper? It says forgot. And was that something you wrote to Eric? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Was that in response to something he said? No, I was going to ask him a question, and I forgot what it was. So you wrote him that you forgot the question you were trying to ask. Him. Exactly. And then did you write what's below that on the note after that? Yes, ma'am. And would you read to the jury what's below the word forgot on the note? Do you want me to, 
to maybe stand trial. And by stand trial, you didn't mean you wanted to take his chair over here on the on trial setting? No, ma'am. I, I just, I didn't know what, what it entailed. I don't know anything. You didn't know, you didn't know that someone who comes to testify is called a witness at that point? I had no idea. And um, was there some cryptic conversation between you and Eric after you wrote that note in which he indicated maybe he could use you as a witness, maybe not. That was the shrugging that I alluded to earlier that he said, yeah, maybe I, I could need you. Now, when you visited Eric um, on all three occasions, in fact, uh, did you have to talk over a telephone to him? That is correct. So, <clears throat> let's talk about the first visit when you went with the friend. Yes, ma'am. What's the friend's name? Scott Fair. F A E R. <coughs> F A E R. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, when you went to visit Eric on that occasion, were there other people visiting at the same time? Yes, ma'am. Were there other inmates being visited? Yes, ma'am. Were there people sitting right next to you? Yes, ma'am. On both sides of you? Yes, ma'am. We had to stand because there was only one chair, so Scott stood behind me while I talked to Eric and then vice versa. And was there someone visiting somebody else to your right? Yes, ma'am. And somebody visiting somebody else to your left? Yes, ma'am. And then there's all these windows that you're looking at. That is correct. And beyond, behind the window you're in front of was Eric? Yes, ma'am. And he was talking to you on a phone? That is correct. So you couldn't pass notes? No, there, there's, <laughs> no he was shackled and, and everything. No, huh? I mean, there's a barrier. Inside the jail, when he comes, to, when he came to the visits that you saw, his hands are, are chained together, are they not? Yes, and his feet. And um, so, when if you'd write a note, the way for him to know what's in your note is what? Hold it, hold it up to the window. Hold it up on the glass so he can read it. Right. And then he nods or shrugs or does something in response to your note. Exactly. Now, on that occasion, when you were there with Scott Fair, did you discuss any facts about the case with Eric whatsoever? No, ma'am. The next visit that you made, you made in the company of your sister? That is correct. And her name is Katie Whalen? That's correct. And that's the occasion on which you wrote the note? That is correct. And you described on the first visit that Scott Fair had to stand behind you. On this visit, did Katie stand behind you? Yeah, we kind of switched off <coughs> talking to him. If you were writing a note, would that mean that you were the person sitting down? That is correct. And on that occasion, when your sister was there, did you discuss anything about the case itself with Eric? No, ma'am. What was your purpose, Mr. Whalen, in going to visit Eric on these two occasions in May of 1990? I wanted to see how he was doing. So was it a personal visit? W without a doubt, yes. Yes, ma'am. Were you concerned about him? Very much so. Did you care about his welfare? Very much so. Were you trying to show support? Without a doubt, yes, ma'am. And Mr. Kuriyama asked you about uh, this statement that Craig Signorelli made to you. What did you say to Craig Signorelli when he made this statement to you? I just found it hard to believe. Did you tell him you thought he was lying? I just found it hard to believe the first time and walked away. And this is when he supposedly told you that Eric had admitted killing his parents? Yes, ma'am. Now, was, based on your lengthy acquaintanceship with Mr. Signorelli, did you believe at that point that he was capable of making a story like this up? Very much so. Was he someone who, in your experience, liked to be the center of attention? Yes, ma'am. Did he like to brag and boast around his peer group? Yes, ma'am. And is that what you thought he was doing? Yes, ma'am. And uh, did you, when you were in Santa Barbara, hear from a number of different people 
that Craig had been going around town making the same statement. Oh, Eric Menendez confessed to me. I'm sorry? Objection calls for hearsay. Sustained. Well, it has to do with this witness's state of mind, Your Honor, and credibility. Objection sustained. Did Craig Signorelli make another statement to you concerning what he was going to say about Eric after he made that first statement? I'm not sure what you're... I'm not sure you understand. All right. Yes, ma'am. Let me get to it. <coughs> In August of 1990, uh, did Craig tell you that he wanted to go back to the police and tell them that Lyle had forced Eric to kill his parents? That is correct. And did you see Craig again in September of 1990? Yes, ma'am. And on that occasion, did Craig again say to you that he wanted to try and prove that Lyle forced Eric to do it? Yes, ma'am. So he was making up stories. Is that correct, in August and September of 1990? Yes, uh, it turned out yes, ma'am. Now, at the time that you went to visit Eric in May of 1990, had there already been television coverage of this case which featured Craig Signorelli? Yes, since March. I mean, I was in Connecticut, so I had no other tie to it except for seeing things on TV. Yes, ma'am. Things like hard copy and... Exactly. Now, Mr. Whalen, since this trial began, you have been most of the time away at school. Is that correct? That is correct. Where are you currently attending school? Arizona State University. And what year are you in now? A senior. And do you hold any position or post with the school? Yes, ma'am. I'm a devil's advocate, which uh, we do orientation for students coming in. I'm a member of the Interfraternity Council Cabinet. I'm a Russ chairman of my fraternity, executive council member. Um, I also work with uh, Christine Wilkinson, who's vice president of the school, for orientation things. So. Okay. Um, to uh, well, strike that, you know that this trial, among other places, is being uh, carried on a cable network called Court TV. Correct. And have you actually observed certain sessions of the case on Court TV? Yes, ma'am. And as to sessions that you have not personally observed, have you been made aware of some of the testimony in the case? Yes, my sister cuts out the article every day, so I, I read every day what's going on. All right. So you are aware, are you not, Mr. Whalen, that there has been testimony in this case that the computer person who came to Eric's house was accompanied by a very pregnant wife? Yes, I, I don't remember her being there. But you do know that that's been the testimony? Yes, ma'am. And uh, do you believe you are a person who is capable of lying if you wanted to? It's argumentative. Uh, you recall being interviewed by a private investigator named Randy Later and myself at your home, your parents' home in Agora in January of 93. Yes, ma'am. Do you remember at that time we went over uh, your recollection of being at the house when the computer person came there. Yes, ma'am. And you recall at that time uh, you understood that the computer person was accompanied by his wife. Yes, ma'am. And at that time you recall telling me that you couldn't remember the wife. Yes. Objection sustained. The answer is stricken. Mr. Whalen, are you lying under oath here in this trial? No, ma'am. Are you making up things that you don't really remember? No, ma'am. Are you testifying only to what you actually can remember? Yes, ma'am. Now, you are aware of the fact, are you not, that Craig Signorelli claimed that he was the person that was there when the computer people came? Yes, ma'am. 
Did he tell the truth about that? No, ma'am. Based on your knowledge of Craig Signorelli, is he capable of making up that story? Yes, ma'am. Objection sustained. The answer is stricken. Now, we've talked about the two visits that you made to the jail in May of 1990. And I believe you testified the third time you went was in January of 1993? Yes, ma'am. And you went with me? Yes, ma'am. And did I give you some instructions before the visit began? Yes, ma'am. Overall. What did I instruct you? Don't talk about anything about the case. And did you follow my instructions? <laughs> you sat right next to me to make sure I did. did. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And at the time that you visited Eric in January of 1993, was that after Mr. Later and I had interviewed you at your home? Yes, ma'am, a few days later. Do you recall when Eric was staying at your house, his receiving telephone calls from other people? I don't remember. Okay. You do recall, I believe, that he made calls to relatives of his? Sustain. Do you remember him making any phone calls at all while he was staying at your house before you left for school? Yes, ma'am. And who do you recall his calling? His, his aunt trying to get a hold of Lyle. And do you know whether or not he ever got a hold of Lyle from your house? I believe it was the day after we were at the Beverly Hills house or the day after that. So at some point, you believe he did reach Lyle from your house? Yes, ma'am. When you went to, uh, when you came back from Connecticut in May of 1990, um, and you wanted to see Eric. Was there something you had to do to be able to get to visit Eric? Yes, ma'am. And what was it you had to do to be able to get to visit Eric? You had to call the grandmother. Eric's grandmother? Yes, ma'am. You had to arrange to visit through her? Yes, ma'am, because I was made aware that she was going down every day and you had to go when she went or the day she wasn't going. Okay, was it your understanding that the jail only permits one visiting session for an inmate a day? I was made aware of that once I was trying to find out if I could see Eric. Yes, ma'am. So that if you didn't make the arrangements with the grandmother and, and Mrs. Menendez had gone down there first, you wouldn't be able to visit? Exactly. Now, when you went down there the first day to see Eric, was his grandmother with you? Not with me going down there, but she was at the place when I arrived. She was at the jail? Yes. So you met with her? Yes, ma'am. So you could all go in together? <laughs> yes, ma'am. And did you all go in together? Well, Noel, who Eric was dating at the time, and Jamie, who Lyle was dating at the time, were there as well. Okay. So let's just talk about who was visiting Eric that day. Did his grandmother actually visit with him that day? Yes, ma'am. And you visited with him? <clears throat> yes, ma'am. And his girlfriend, Noel, visited with him? Yes, ma'am. Um, and your friend, Scott, who was with you? <coughs> yes, ma'am. So that's four people? Yes, ma'am. How long was the visiting period? I think 20 minutes. The 20 tops. minutes total. Or, yes, yes, ma'am. 20 minutes. That was the limit on, on visiting. Is that yes, ma'am, from what I remember. So the four of you spent 20 minutes visiting with Eric together. Just kind of passing the phone around. Yes, ma'am. And each one having a, saying a few words. Yes, ma'am. Now for the second visit with your sister Katie the next time, did you also meet up with Mrs. Menendez, Eric's grandmother, on that occasion? Yes, ma'am. Was Noel also there, Eric's girlfriend? No, ma'am. So was it just the three of you that time? Yes, ma'am. And was that another 20-minute visit? Yes, ma'am. And did you allow his grandmother to talk to him during that visit? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So you passed the phone around again? That's correct. And you recall that the time I went down there with you in January of 93? Yes, ma'am. Did they limit us to a 20-minute visit also? Not even that long, ma'am, yes. Now, 
you indicated to Detective Zoller when you spoke to him in October of 90 that you did have intentions of visiting Eric again. That is correct. And were you prevented somehow by these other people? I just, the, I just didn't end up going to see him. Things got in the way. I just, I just didn't have the time to go see him. Was it also difficult to get his girlfriend in particular to relinquish any time for you to visit? Yes, yes ma'am, that's for sure. She was being kind of possessive. Um, I just want to take you back, um, based on your lengthy acquaintanceship with Craig Signorelli and including 1989, <clears throat> what color, for as long as you've known him, is Craig Signorelli's hair? Black or really dark, really dark brown. And was it black or really dark brown in August and September of 1989? Yes, ma'am. Going back to the time when you were in Eric's house and on the, on the day that the computer person came, okay? Yes, ma'am. At some point during that visit at Eric's house, uh, did you notice that there were boxes of things in his bedroom? Yes, ma'am. And what kinds of things were in the boxes? Um, tennis, tennis rackets, tennis stuff, papers in them. Um, various things, various boxes with various things in them. And did you spend any time looking through those boxes in Eric's room while you were at uh, his house? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> now, you test, and do you, do you recall now whether or not you did that before or, or um, after the computer person arrived? Before. But I take it it was after Eric had received that note that was supposed to be from Lyle. Yes, then we went upstairs, he checked his messages, and then we looked through the boxes. Now, you said that he seemed shook up from that note, and so he were you. Overall, let you ask the question. But let's not go over the same no. material as before. Were you both shook up by this note? Yes, ma'am. I mean... Okay, you've answered the question. Okay. Do you remember if there was a telephone number in the note, a place where Lyle supposedly could be reached? I never saw the note. I don't know. You've uh, indicated to Mr. Kuriyama that there was one evening when Eric was staying at your house that you didn't spend the evening with him. Uh, yes, ma'am. I think Mr. Kuriyama said one night that you didn't spend with Eric. Yes, ma'am. Well, where did Eric sleep that night? At my house. We just didn't go out that night. After you moved to uh, Santa Barbara to attend school, oh, did you maintain contact with Eric? No, I didn't talk to him actually till that, that next May. You didn't talk to him between <coughs> September 5th and the Memorial Day time when you visited him? No, ma'am. I mean, I might have he might have been home one day on the phone when I called down from Santa Barbara and I might have said hi or I always asked how he was doing or when he was leaving but that was the extent of our conversation until that Memorial weekend. And if you had made those calls or, or talked to him during that time that would have still been in the early part of September 1989. Yes, between probably the 5th and the 10th. Did you get busy with school? Yeah, very much so. So you didn't see him until you saw him in jail, is that right? That is overall. That is correct. Did she, and, and you didn't talk to him on the telephone during that time either? No, ma'am. I have nothing further on. Any recross? Yes. Mr. 
Mr. Whalen, you have in front of you Exhibit 215? Yes, sir. Right? Looks like it's been kind of crumpled up. Yes, sir. Did you wad that thing up last night? No, sir. Uh, you found that somewhere last night? Yes, sir. It's in one of my drawers in my room. Okay. And you, you save things, correct? I'm a pack rat, yes, sir. You have a good memory, too, don't you? About certain events, yes, sir. Do you remember when you picked up Eric Menendez from the airport, uh, where you picked him up? Baggage claim. Which airline? I said I didn't remember. Do you remember parking at the airport? No, I, I don't remember whether I just parked right outside a baggage claim or I parked in the structure. I don't remember. If you had parked in the structure, would you have kept that parking uh, receipt? Objection, your calls Overall. No, sir. You would not have kept that? No, sir. Don't you have to give it back to him when you pay for it? You can get a receipt for it. Oh, no. Objection, your Right, your now, next question, please. Mr. Whalen, it wasn't hard to write that note, was it? You mm -hmm. had a pen and you had paper right there with you? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Overall. Is that correct? It, it was not difficult to write that, no. Would it have been difficult for you to write, Signorelli said you did it? Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Overall. Could you have written that? No, it wouldn't have been difficult, no, sir. You could have written that on the paper and shown it to Eric Menendez. That is correct. So he would have known uh, what was being said? Yes, sir. Now, you indicated that you're the devil's advocate. Is that right at, at your school? Yes, sir. Now, when uh, Craig Signorelli told you that Eric Menendez had said to him that he and Lyle had killed his parents, uh, you... Objection to states the witnesses... <coughs> Sustained. Had you... Did you testify that... Uh, Craig Signorelli told you that Eric Menendez had told him that he and Lyle had killed their parents? Objection on the state's testimony. Overall. Did, did, I, did I say in court that Craig... Did that happen? Did Craig Signorelli tell you that? Yes, sir. And you found that hard to believe, is that correct? That is correct. Was that because uh, Eric Menendez had told you that he was going to kill the people who had killed his parents? I, I felt the whole whole thing was hard to believe. Okay. Your Honor, th there is one area perhaps we should approach this very briefly on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Whalen, after Craig Signorelli told you uh, about what Eric told him, you found it hard to believe. Is that correct? I found the whole, the whole episode hard to believe, everything that was going on. Why did you? All right, we don't uh, have uh, clarification at this point as to what you found hard to believe, Mr. Pierre. What is it that you found hard to believe? Something that is was in the media that they're this big, that hit that close to home, that people were making, you know, that just I just couldn't believe the whole, how close to home something like this was coming. In particular, what you found? The whole case, sir. Well, let's break the whole case down into a few specifics. Um, can you think of anything specific that you were thinking of when you thought it was hard to believe? All this being on TV, a good friend of mine, um, just nothing in particular, just the whole thing that encompassed the, the whole case. Does that, the whole case, does that involve... Your Honor, at your, this point I'm going to check out what the purpose of this. Why don't you just rephrase the question, Mr. Green? Okay. Did you have a belief as to whether Eric and Lyle Menendez had killed their parents? No, I, I, at the time, no, I did not believe that. Why? Because I thought they had a good relationship with their parents from what I saw. You saw no mistreatment? Nope. Did you think, of, did you have a particular feeling about uh, whether or not they were abused. Objection, Your Honor. Courts already ruled on me. I, I did not think so. I object to this, Your Honor. I think it's improper. In fact, did you indicate that you thought it was a hoax? Objection. Overall. In my, in my statement? Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. 
at the time, I just, I just didn't believe the whole, the whole case. Yes, sir. So when Craig Signorelli told you that, you just didn't believe it. I, I couldn't believe it. It was just hard, hard for me to believe. And you had been a good friend of Eric, and you had seen uh, his parents come to his tennis lessons. That, that is correct. Yes, sir. You had seen his relationship with his mother. Yes, sir. Now, as it turns out, Craig Signorelli was correct. Objection, Your Honor. It's jury to decide. Now, you said that Craig Signorelli told you at one point that he, he wanted to help Eric. He wanted to say that Lyle forced Eric, correct? That is correct. Now, you thought that he was making up a story at that point, correct? <coughs> Yes, sir. Did you know at that point that it was Eric's idea in the first place? Objection, Your Honor. Move to strike. Sustain. Objection sustained to the question. You've been watching this trial and reading in the paper about the trial, correct? Yes, sir. And did you read that uh, it was Your Eric's Honor, idea I'm gonna, initially? I'm going to object characterizing the testimony that way and object to what this witness heard as hearsay. Objection sustained. Now, you indicated <clears throat> that you had seen witnesses, the computer person, come in and testify, correct? Mistakes is testimony. Well, did you see them on TV? No, sir, I did not see them did on TV. Did you read about their testimony in the newspaper? Yes, I heard the, the pe people. Yes, sir. yes, sir, I did. So you knew at that time that both Ed Heyman and, and Debbie Heyman had identified Craig Signorelli as the person being there, correct? That is correct. And you indicated that you were gone away to school and then you went to Connecticut for a while, correct? Correct. <clears throat> and that you didn't come back until May 1990. Exactly, yes, sir. But you had seen Craig Signorelli on hard copy prior to that time, correct? Prior, to, yes, sir, to me coming back to Los Angeles, that's, that is correct. And Craig Signorelli, according to the media, uh, they believed he was the best friend of Eric Menendez. Objection, Your Honor, to what the media believes. All right, uh, let's rephrase the question as it relates to this witness. Did you actually see this hard copy uh, segment? Yes, sir. Did you see Craig Signorelli on that segment? Uh, I'd seen him, and in, in maybe it wasn't particularly hard copy, but yes, I did. And that was prior to May of 1990? Yes, sir. And you weren't being shown on, on those programs as his best friend, were you? No, sir. Did you read in the paper that Ed Heyman and Debbie Heyman had seen Craig Signorelli on hard copy or one of those shows and said, that is the person that we saw? I'm well aware of that, yes, sir. How are you aware of that? How am I aware of that they pointed out that it was Signorelli? Yes. Um, from, from hearing uh, something about their testimony that they were up here, that they said it was, that, that, that they thought it was Signorelli who was there. And did you read that in the paper or did somebody tell you that? Uh, it could have been both. I know my sister's really up to date on it, so she might have told me. I might have read it. Now, when you first testified in cross-examination about these two visits uh, with uh, Eric Menendez in May of 1990, you stated that you were with uh, a friend. I believe his name was Scott? Yes. And then on redirect examination, you changed that and you added a couple of other people? Is that I right? did not change that. Did, did you <coughs> alter your testimony somehow? No, sir. No, sir. You didn't mention any other people being there. They asked me who I went down to see him with, and I said who I went down to see him with. It was common knowledge that Mrs. Menendez was there every day. And these other people that you've mentioned, the girlfriends, uh, what is it, Noel Terleski? Yes, sir. Jamie Pisarczyk? Yes, sir. They were there as well? One, the first day. And the second day, and the first day is the day that you sent this note, this Exhibit 215? N no, sir. It was the second day? Yes, sir. My sister was in my presence. And who else was in your presence? Mrs. Menendez. You didn't show the note to Mrs. Menendez before you showed it to Eric Menendez, did you? It was a blank piece of paper, no. I wrote the note as I was sitting down at the desk.
I have nothing further at this time. Any regret? Mr. Whalen, you remember when I came to your house in January of 1993 with Mr. Later, we talked about what the defense was in this case. Recall that? Yes, ma'am. I told you what it was that we were going to show Mr. Menendez and Mrs. Menendez did to their children. Remember my telling you that? Yes, ma'am. And do you remember what your reaction was? Objection to the Well, it has to do with, yes. Mr. Whalen, let me ask you something about this interview that was conducted with you by Detective Zoller in October of 1990. Okay. Yes, ma'am. How did the issue of abuse come up in that interview? Do you remember? Mm, I, have no, I, I don't remember. Did Detective Zoller bring it up? He might have asked me the question. I, I, I don't remember. Did he ask you if Eric had ever complained about his parents mistreating him? Yes, he might have. Okay. Now, did you know, Mr. Whalen, based on your knowing Eric and your knowing his parents, that they put a great deal of pressure on him? Um, you could sense it a little bit at the, at the tennis matches. Did you know that they made most of his decisions for him? No, I wasn't aware of that, that side of his... How about his decision of where to go to school? Yeah, I knew he didn't particularly want to go to UCLA. And do you know why it was he was going there anyway? His father? His father what? His fa he said more or less that his father was making him go to school there. Now, you know now, do you not, Mr. Whalen, that Eric did indeed participate in killing his parents? Yes, ma'am. Has your opinion of him as a person changed? No, ma'am. You indicated that you wanted, uh, that you went to see him because you wanted to help him. Correct. And are you testifying because you wanted to help him? I'm just testifying to the facts that I know, I mean. But you want to help him, don't you? Yes, ma'am. You care about him, don't you? Very much so. And why do you care about him? Be He's never been anything but a good friend to me, and I, I'd always stick by a friend, I just. Any friend? No, but he was a particularly good friend. Is it because of the kind of person he is that you're sticking by? Very much so. When you and Eric were good friends in high school, were you the kind of friends who would sit and have long talks about your innermost feelings and thoughts, or were you more that get up and have a good time type of friend. The latter. The get up and have a good time. Type. Yes, ma'am. At that time in your emotional development, were you very introspective and thoughtful or were you sort of out there partying around? Uh, no, I was, again, the latter. I was m not too introspective. I was out to have a really good time. So would it be fair to say that you didn't particularly confide in Eric and he didn't particularly confide in you? No, ma'am. We were pretty much go out and have good, f good time buddies. Was there something about his relationship with Craig that seemed secretive to you? Yes, ma'am. Was there something about the way Craig lived his life or acted around his peers that also seemed secretive? Yes, ma'am. Did you ever know Craig Signorelli to have a girlfriend? No, ma'am. When he was in college, did he show any interest in girls? Did you know Eric's girlfriend? Um, a few of them. Did you know Kirsten Smith? Yeah, um, kind of, I mean, we knew of each other and mutual friends. And Did you know other girls at Calabasas High School that Eric dated? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And you've already indicated that you met Noel Terleski at the jail. Yes, ma'am. I have nothing for you.
Mr. Whalen, you've uh, testified that Eric Menendez is a nonviolent person. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I mean, yes, sir, to, to my knowledge. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry about that. that twi twice, in, twice in two days. <laughs> Apologize. Now, with respect to uh, Eric Menendez, he, he wanted to play football, you said yesterday, right? Yes, sir. Yes. And his parents didn't uh, want him to, to do that. Yes, sir. They didn't want him to get hurt. Yes, sir. Now, how <coughs> could speculation as to why? Did Eric Menendez tell you why his parents didn't want him to play football? No, I mean, he just, he just said my parents aren't going to let me play football. That was the gist of it. And he wanted to? Yes, sir. Eric Menendez is, is taller than you, isn't he? Yes, sir. Strong athlete? Yes, sir. Would have played, made a pretty good football player? Yes, sir. Pretty, pretty aggressive? Objection on. Pretty aggressive? Yes. I mean, he was an aggressive tennis player. Yeah. You know, playing football, you have to be pretty aggressive, don't you? Do you think that he would have been a good football player? He would have been more of a wide receiver. That takes a lot more grace and things like that. That was the kind of caliber that Eric was. He was big and he had speed. He was just, he looked like he had talent and, and the, the, the thing it takes to be a good receiver. Now, did you know, you testified about uh, this friend of yours, Eric Menendez. You knew that he had committed some residential burglaries in Calabasas. Right? Yes, sir. You knew about that? Yes, sir. And it involved thousands and thousands of dollars? Objection, Your Honor. Be proper. Oh, well. well, I'd like to be heard. the question. Though. Okay. It involved a great amount of property and money and jewelry, didn't it? Yes, sir. It's a pretty sophisticated uh, burglary as to the second burglary, wasn't Objection, it? Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> You heard about this entire line given our stipulation. All right, you may approach. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Whalen, you testified that uh, you like to get up and have a good time with when you were with Eric, correct? Yes, sir. You're not the kind that uh, talks about things. That'd be fair to say. Overall. Uh, could you clarify that question? Yes. You and Eric didn't confide in one another. Is that correct? Uh, not to any deep degree. I mean, Miss Miss Abramson said if we had long, drawn-out talks, no. I mean, we talked about various things, but no, nothing. Did uh, Eric Menendez ever tell you about the burglaries that he was involved in? Mm, no. You mm. heard about that from some someone else? Yes, sir. At some point, Eric Menendez and his family had to leave Calabasas. Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> Rephrase the question, please. At, at some point, did uh, the Menendez family have to leave Calabasas? Same objection. Same question. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why the Menendezes left Calabasas? Objection, Your Honor. This will call it hearsay or speculation. All right, why don't you uh, try to think that one? Did Eric Menendez ever tell you why? They had to leave Calabasas. Objective form of question again. Overall. No, sir, I just knew they had moved to Beverly Hills. Now, you um, talked about the relationship that Craig Signorelli had with uh, Eric Menendez, <coughs> and it was m much closer in terms of they were confidants of each other. Objection in the States of testimony. Overall. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yeah, yeah, different than my relationship with Eric. They would. Uh, talk about things. Oh, let me ask you this. W did you know of any activities that they would um, collaborate on in terms of writing things? Objection, Your Honor. Ask your approach. Overall. Mm. Uh, I'd like to know. No, this goes to a relationship of, or this witness's knowledge and relationship with uh, Mr. Signorelli and the defendant. Objection overall. No, not, no, no, sir. Not to any great detail, no. Well, to any detail, did did you know that they were writing screenplays together? Objection. No, sir. Overall. No, sir. I have nothing further at this time, Your Honor. Did you know that Craig Signorelli was involved in the Calabasas burglaries also? Yes, ma'am. I have nothing further. Anything else? No, ma'am. What should I do with this, sir? <coughs> Just leave it right there. All right.
Can I take my water? <laughs> you can take it. All right, uh, your excuse subject to being recalled, however. Yes, sir. Your next witness? Uh, my next witness, Your Honor, is uh, Kathy. Uh, Kathleen Bulow Cohen, B U L O W dash C O H E N. Kathleen, K A T H L E E N. Is Mrs. Cohen okay? Yeah. Okay, but I need you to either get closer to the microphone okay. or we'll have to. Good. Okay. Okay, very good. Are you uh, Casey Whalen's mother? Yes, I am. And uh, do you know Eric Menendez? Yes, I do. Did you in. August of 1989, attend a memorial service for Eric's parents here in Los Angeles. Yes, I did. And uh, at the time of that memorial service, did your son Casey make a request of you? Yes, he did. What did he request? Uh, he asked that under the circumstances, would it be all right if Eric stayed with us? And I said, absolutely. And when was it your, strike that. What was your understanding of when it was that Eric was going to stay with you? Uh, Eric was going to go back to Princeton for the funeral, and then when he returned, he would be staying with us. And do you recall approximately how long it was from the memorial service until Eric started to stay with you? <coughs> mm, approximately, probably five days to a week. Five days to a? A week. Thank you. Sorry. And after uh, the day of the memorial service, do you recall any telephone calls uh, from Eric uh, to your home uh, in Agora before he returned from New Jersey? Uh, I, yes, I do. And uh, to, to the best of your understanding, <coughs> were your son Casey and Eric doing some arranging for how Casey was to pick Eric up? Yes. And do you have in your mind's eye, in your memory, a recollection of the day when your son Casey left your home to go pick Eric up? Yes, I do. And was it your understanding that Casey was supposed to go to the house in Beverly Hills before he went to the airport? Yes, it is. And at some point that day, do you, did you receive a telephone call from your son? Yes, I did. And uh, without s telling us what he said, can you describe what his demeanor was like on the phone? Uh, nervous. Concerned. And did you give him uh, advice? Yes, I did. Did you tell him to go to the airport? Yes, I did. Now, sometime subsequent to receiving that telephone call from your son, did you see Eric Menendez and your son together later that day? Yes, I did. And do you recall where it was that you saw them? Well, we went for dinner. And where did you go to dinner? Uh, La Paz. What is La Paz? It's a Mexican restaurant. Where is it? Canoga Park, Woodland Hills. Now, do you recall um, any discussion that was being conducted by Eric and or your son at dinner that night relating to anything that had happened that day? Um, there was some talk about a uh, computer. And was it Eric or Casey or both of them talking about a computer? I don't recall. And was it your understanding, where was this computer that they were talking about? Let's do it. Let me just move along, and then we can go back. Um, was there any discussion at the dinner table? Um, well, strike this. Did Eric Menendez say anything at the dinner table about his brother or trying to find his brother? Yes. It has to go to state of mind, Your Honor. Overall, the answer was time. Yes. Answer? And do you recall what it was Eric was saying about his brother? Uh, he was trying to locate him. He was concerned. Did he indicate that he didn't know where he was or that he didn't know? Objection leading. 
What did he indicate about his state of knowledge of Lyle's whereabouts? He wasn't sure how to contact him. He wasn't sure exactly where he was, my understanding. Uh, did he indicate whether or not he understood what state Lyle was in? California, New York, New Jersey, anywhere? I believe he did. And do you remember now what he, what he thought? New Jersey. <coughs> Hmm. Was there a point when you um, were aware that Eric was talking to his brother on the telephone? Yes. And do you recall when that was in relation to this dinner when Eric said he was trying to locate his brother? It was either the next day or the day after that. And did you overhear a conversation between Eric and his brother? Um, I heard Eric on the phone and, and he seemed upset. And do you seem upset with Lyle? Yes. Do you recall what he said? Sustained. Has to do with state of mind, Your Honor. Objection sustained. <coughs> do you recall whether or not anything was said about computers or wills in that phone conversation? Overall. Uh, yes, there was. And would you tell us what you overhead being, overheard being said on that topic? Um, he questioned why the will, was either going to be erased or was erased. Eric was questioning Lyle as to why the will was either going to be or was erased? Yes. And this is the day after your son Casey has picked Eric up at the airport. Either the day after or the or day, the day after, after that. that. Exactly. So this is either September 2nd or 3rd. Is that correct? Yes. Objection I make a motion to strike and speculation. As to what? As to the dates. No? I should sustain the answer to Do you recall what date it was that your son picked Eric up at the airport? Yes. What date was it? September 1st. Now, do you know who Craig Signorelli is? Yes, I do. And uh, before, before Eric was arrested, did you see Craig Signorelli at a football game? Yes, I did. And do you recall approximately what month and what year it was that you saw Craig at a football game? Yes, I do. And when was it? October of 1989. And uh, what kind of football game was this? Yeah, my daughter was cheering and Craig Signorelli's brother was quarterbacking. What teams? Calabasas mm -hmm. High School and I believe Moore Park. And uh, did it take place at Calabasas High School or at Moore Park? No, Moore Park. And uh, did you see uh, Craig Signorelli uh, during the game? Yes, I did. We sat together. He sat next to you? Yes. And did you notice anything about him? He seemed um, nervous. Um, Nervous. And did uh, did you strike up a conversation with him uh, that had anything whatsoever to do with uh, the Menendez family or the death of the Menendez parents? Uh, it was a topic of conversation between both of you. Yes. Were there other people there who were also conversing about it? No, Craig and I were sitting together. So I. So the two of you were discussing. The fact that the Menendez parents had been killed? Yes. <clears throat> and uh, did Craig tell you something that he was doing, some project of his at that time? Yes, he did. And what did he tell you he was doing? He was told, told me that he was involved in a, uh, writing a screenplay and uh, that... Screenplay about, did he tell you what about? The murder. Excuse me? The murder. Of the Menendez parents? Yes. Okay, and what else did he say about the screenplay he was writing about their murder? That he thought that he could sell it for a lot of money. And did you uh, say anything to him in relation to that? I think I was dumbstruck. Why were you dumbstruck? Now, 
let's go back for a moment to uh, when Eric came to stay with you. Approximately how long did he stay at your house? About 10 days. And uh, during the time that your son Casey was still there, uh, did uh, Eric sleep at your house every night? I believe all but um, one night. Oh. Did your son Casey go back to school on the 5th? Yes, he did. And did Eric sleep there every night until after Casey left? Yes, he did. So one night after Casey left, Eric might not have stayed at your house overnight. Right. And did you notice uh, at some point after Eric started to stay at your house that uh, Craig Signorelli started to show up? Yes. And uh, after your son left for school, did Eric uh, seem to spend uh, some time with Craig? Yes. And was it only after uh, your son Casey left that Eric seemed to be spending time with Craig? Yes. I have nothing further. Mrs. Coyne? Yes. Are you sure about that date, September 1st, or could it, been, could it have been a day before or a day after? No, I believe it was September 1st. <clears throat> what makes you think that? Um, well, talking uh, with my son and my daughter, and um, I know that the day that my son left for school, too, so counting backwards, I would say September 1st. You would say that, but discounting anything you were told by either your son or your daughter. Do I you believe it was September. Do you have a specific recollection of the particular day? I believe it was September 1st. Okay. And you do that, you arrive at that date by counting back from when your son had to leave? No, by picturing the day. Now, were you working during that period of time? Uh, no, I was not. So it could have been any day during the week. No, because I know that he he was in New Jersey for the funeral, and it was planned for him to come back on a certain date. So you know, if the funeral was the you know if he left uh, Los Angeles what the twenty fifth or twenty sixth, I know that he was there for at least uh, four or five days. Do you know that the funeral was uh, which day the funeral was on? At the time, I did yes. Uh, have you been watching the case or uh, reading about the case at all? Yes, I have. Uh, did you hear the aunt uh, testify in this case, um, Teresita Baralt, that... Uh, Objection, Your Honor, to hearsay. I have a question. Well, exactly the question. Well, you have to recite testimony. Well, it's, if it's accurately recited, it's hard and harmful, so let's hear what the question The question is that... Uh, did you see or read in the paper that uh, Mrs. Baralt, um, Jose Menendez's older sister, testified that uh, Eric uh, Menendez came in for just the uh, memorial service and left the next day? He didn't stay for more than 24 hours. Objection, Your Honor, that totally mistakes Mrs. Baralt's testimony. All right, the objection is sustained as to the form of the question. You may ask a different question, please. Did you, did you hear any testimony by Mrs. Baralt? Terry, or Teresita Peralt? Yes, I did. Uh, was it your understanding uh, from that testimony that uh, Eric Menendez came in for the uh, memorial service and then left? I didn't hear that. Okay. Your Honor, I'm going to move to strike the question. That misstates Mrs. Peralt's testimony. All right. Objection is overruled. The answer will stand. Getting to the statement that you uh, told the jury about, about Craig Signorelli at this football game in October of 1989. Did you know at that time that uh, Craig Signorelli had uh, spoken to Eric Menendez about the killings of his parents? No, I don't. You didn't know that? No. You didn't know that he had information from Eric Menendez? Object to the formal no. question. Overall.
Now, in, in talking about this screenplay, did he give you details about uh, the <coughs> fact that he wasn't going to put in the real names of the people involved? No. Did you know that uh, Craig Signorelli had a conversation with Eric Menendez that was taped on November 29, 1989? No, I did not. All right, she's answered no, she did, did not. The question is, she's been asked and she's answered it. The question is now, does she know? Did Craig Signorelli indicate to you that he had been collaborating with Eric Menendez on screenplays? No. Overruled. What was the answer? No. He didn't tell you that? No. Did Craig Signorelli tell you that uh, the screenplay would be based on the actual Menendez murders? We were talking about the murders, so um, it, I believe it would follow. <clears throat> now you indicated that uh, 10 days, uh, you believed it was about 10 days that Eric Menendez stayed at your house? Mm-hmm. And that he slept over all but one night that you know of? Yes. How, how long was it that you knew Eric Menendez? Objection beyond Overall. About two years. At that point, uh, your son had met Eric Menendez at uh, Calabasas High School? That's correct. In the 11th grade? Mm -hmm. And you really didn't know much about Eric Menendez, I, I take it? I went to his tennis matches, and he came over to the house and spent time with my sons. Now, as far as you knew, did, would you check in on uh, Eric Menendez and your son every night to make sure that they're safely in bed? The next morning, if not that night. The next morning you would go into the room to make sure that they were okay? No, I, I, was, I was not working, so I was around the house, and so I was aware that they were in the home. Now, Eric Menendez was about 19 years old at this time? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. Now, you didn't know that at the age of one and a half, Eric Menendez snuck out of his house in his diapers and would go across the street to his, his uh, relative's house. Did you, did you no, know about that? No, no. Yeah. All right, objection sustained. Okay. You would see Craig Signorelli at your house um, with uh, Eric Menendez, is that yes. correct? Is there any way that you can show exactly when it was uh, that Eric Menendez first arrived at your house? Objection question. I believe it could be done. Objection overruled. The answer was done. Okay. Uh, how do you think it can be done? I can go back um, possibly and look at... Um, I usually keep um, calendars. I believe I threw that year out. But I can go back and look at uh, telephone bills or whatever. Okay. For 1989? I believe so. Any redirect. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. you. May step down. You're excused. Your next witness. Katie. All right, how long do you think this testimony will be? Um, I think it's going to take us to pass the meeting or I'm not supposed to go past the meeting. All right, uh, that witness can come, come back on Tuesday? Yes, she can. Uh, okay, then we'll resume on Tuesday, ladies and gentlemen, at uh, 1 30. Don't discuss this case with anyone. Don't form any final opinions about it. Before I excuse you, let me go through uh, the same uh, questioning I've done with you in the past. And um, let me ask whether or not any of you have uh, seen or heard anything about this case outside of the courtroom uh, other than what you've already told me. No, no, sir. Okay. All right, then, uh, let's keep it that way. Uh, don't uh, look at any of the news coverage. Uh, don't uh, permit yourself to be in any situation where uh, anything about this case is um, discussed or in any way um, presented to you. And uh, don't form any final opinions about it. There's still more evidence to be heard, and you have to wait till you hear everything before you find, formulate your final uh, opinions about this case. And uh, all of you have a good and safe weekend, and we'll see you all back here on Tuesday at 1.30. Uh, Katie Whalen, Your Honor.
Katharina Josephine Whalen, W H A L E N. C A T H A R I N A. Do people call you Katie? Yes. Okay, Miss Whalen, are you related to Kevin Casey Whalen? Yes. And are you related to Kathleen Cohen? Yes. Who are they? Kathy, Mrs. Cohen is my mom, and Casey Whalen is my brother. And are you acquainted with Eric Menendez, my client? Yes. Do you recall a time in 1989 when Eric Menendez stayed at your home? Yes. And was this following the death of his parents? Yes. Do you remember the first night that Eric stayed at your home? Yes. And uh, do you recall whether or not you were at dinner with Eric that night? Yes. And were you? Yes, I was there. And who else was present at dinner? My, my brother and my mom. And? And Eric and, and Eric and myself. And do you recall where the dinner was? We ate at La Paz. It's a Mexican restaurant in the valley. And uh, to the best of your knowledge, uh, had Eric arrived in Los Angeles that day? Yes. Now, do you recall at dinner whether or not there was a conversation between Casey and Eric uh, having to do with events of that day? Yes. Overall, the answer will stand. Now, do you recall Eric uh, talking? Yes. And uh, can you tell us uh, what it was that Eric was talking about? Sustained. Your Honor, this is not being offered for the truth. Then it's irrelevant. Well, I'd like to be heard. All right, you may. Thank you. The uh, court reverses its ruling, and you may proceed with the question. Thank you. I'd like to rephrase the question. All right. Um, Ms. Whalen, you don't recall exactly what was said at the dinner. Is that correct? That is correct. You recall, however, certain words that Eric said about the, the subject matter, in other words, of the conversation? Yes. And would you tell the jury what the words were that you recall? I rec Well, my brother and Eric were speaking. I recall... No, not your brother and you, what Eric had said okay. at dinner. Okay. Um, there was mention of a will, and there was mention of Lyle, and the will having to do with a computer. Okay. And that was the subject matter of the conversation that you overheard at dinner? Yes. Now, over the next few days, did Eric stay at your home? Yes. And specifically that, by the way, do you recall what night this dinner was, what day of the week? I believe it was a Friday. And uh, did Eric sleep over at your house that Friday night? Yes. Did he sleep at your house that Saturday, the following Saturday? Yes. And the Sunday? Yes. And do you know if that was a holiday weekend? It was, I think maybe it was Labor Day. I mean, the first weekend of September. And do you recall if your brother left for school following that holiday weekend? Yes. And until the time that your brother left for school, do you recall whether or not Eric slept at your house each night? Yes. And did he? Yes. Now, after your brother left for school, do you recall a particular night when you were downstairs doing something with your stepdad? Yes. And would you tell us, what, what were you doing? We were, we were just about to watch a movie. And I, I believe my mom wasn't home, and Eric was upstairs in my brother's room. Okay, and when you say we were about to watch a movie, that was yourself and who else? My stepfather. That's Mr. Cohen. Yes. And uh, did you do something uh, after? Did you do something at that point? Yeah. It's irrelevant. Overall. You may answer. I went upstairs and I knocked on the door to my brother's room, and there was no response. And I knocked again. And I and I said Eric, and, and there was no response. And so I opened the door. And what did you see when you opened the door? Eric was lying down on the bed, just like staring at the ceiling, almost asleep with his eyes open. Did you say something to him? Yeah, I, I called his name again. And did he respond? No, and, and I finally just touched the bed, and, and it, I think it shook him, and he just sat up and looked at me, and I asked him if he would like to watch the movie with us, and he said he was going to sleep. When you saw him, though, in the bed, his eyes were open? Mm -hmm. How could you tell? Was the lights on in the room or off? Yeah, there was a, a dim light in the corner of the room. Now, some months later, <clears throat> did you become aware that Erica and his brother Lyle had been arrested? Yes. And do you recall a time when you accompanied your brother to the county jail to visit Eric? 
Yes. And do you have any idea about when that was? My brother returned from Connecticut on May 21st, so I believe it was maybe the 25th or the before Memorial Day. And um, did you go to the jail just with your brother? Yes. Did you meet anyone related to Eric when you got to the jail? Yes, his grandmother. And uh, when you uh, had your visit with Eric, was his grandmother close by? Yes, she was standing. Um, Lyle and Eric were next to each other, and she was standing near Lyle. So both brothers were uh, present for the visit time? Yes, at different windows. At different windows? Yeah, like where you can speak. To speak on a telephone? Yes. Did you visit with Lyle at all? No. And uh, with respect to the visit with Eric, um, physically, how was it arranged for two people to visit one person at the jail? Um, two people couldn't sit, but one person could sit and another person could stand. There was enough space for either myself to be sitting and Casey to be standing or vice versa. And for most of the visit, were you, do you know if you were talking to Eric on the phone or was Casey? Most of the time, Casey was speaking on the phone, sitting. And were you standing right behind him? Yes. And could you hear what Casey was saying? Yes. And do you recall uh, whether or not Casey was saying anything about any facts relating to this case? I don't recall that he did. Do you remember what he was talking about? Um, it, it was... I, I just remember asking Eric, him speaking to Eric about how Eric was and what it was like. and What it was like in jail? Yes. And did you speak to Eric briefly yourself over the phone? Yes. And did you and Eric discuss any facts about his case? No. Do you recall at some point that your brother wrote a note? Yes. And what did he do with the note after he wrote it? Um, I suppose he put it in his pocket. Oh, oh he, there was a glass. and. Um, he wrote it and, and just turned it around and put it on the glass. Okay. I'd like to approach the witness, Your Honor, with Exhibit 215. Yes. I'm asking you to look at this piece of paper. Uh, do you know if you've ever seen that piece of paper before? Yes. Where have you seen it? At the jail and uh, the other night when my brother was cleaning out his drawers and we found it. Was it crumpled up inside your brother's chair? No, he was cleaning, and uh, we looked at it, and it was kind of ironic because he was home to stand on the you know, to come to trial, and uh, he just threw it away. And then when you know we we remembered it, and we decided that it was important to bring. You say he threw it away. I, I believe he crumpled it and just put it in his in his bedroom in a trash can. Okay, and then he re he retrieved it from there. Yes. It had been in his drawer. Yes, it was in his drawer for three years. Now, during the time, did Eric remain at your home and spend nights at your home after your brother went back to school? Yes. And during the time that Eric was at your home. Uh, did you ever receive any phone calls, uh, someone asking for Eric? Yes. And did you recognize the voice in the phone calls? No. Was it uh, male or female? Male. And did that person uh, identify himself in any way as a relative of Eric's? No. <coughs> and did the person merely ask if Eric was there? Yes. And do you recall if these calls came in on the line you shared with your brother or on your parents' line? I believe it was the line I shared with Casey. And would you give us the last four digits of that line? 0313. I have nothing further to add. Cross-examination. Ms. Whalen, did you uh, testify that your brother crumpled up uh, this sheet of paper uh, the night before he came in to testify? I don't, I don't think it was the night before. When was that that you saw this piece of paper? Um, he had come home in um, August because he thought he was going to have to be on trial then. And um, at, right before he left to go back to school, he cleaned, he cleaned it out then. And then he returned a week later to come. So August when? Um, 
maybe the 16th or 17th. And is that when he was cleaning out his room? I think so. And were you with him cleaning out the room? Um, just for a minute, I came upstairs to ask him something and I saw what he was doing. At that time, did you see this letter? Yes. And did uh, you have a discussion with your brother about this letter at that time, August 16th? Yeah, he, he opened it and said, oh, oh my gosh, this is from when we went to the jail. And I, and I looked at it and I agreed with him and he, it didn't seem to serve a purpose for anything, so he threw it out. Okay, so on August 16th, he crumpled it up and threw it out? I believe so. I don't know if it was August 16th for sure, but... That's the best uh, yes. recollection is that he threw it out on the 16th of August. And did, did you help him clean up that day? Um, I went through one drawer. And he was going through his other drawers? Yeah, he has a desk and a dresser. And did he throw away some other things uh, that day? Um, yeah, some letters from people and... And just tossed them in the wastebasket? To the best of my recollection, yes. Okay. Or a trash bag. Now, do you remember the specific date that Eric Menendez, the defendant in this case, came to your house after the murders of his parents? I believe it was September 1st. How do you remember that specific date? Because um, I look back and I had a calendar that said when I worked, at, I just started a job then at the end of the summer of 1989. And on September 1st, I worked from 6 to 9. And they picked me up at work. 6 to 9 at night? Yeah, I believe. And who picked you up from work? Well, my mom and my brother and Eric were in the car. And where were you working at that point? Calabasas Yogurt and Video. And after they picked you up, the three of them, you then went to dinner? Yes. Did you check your records to see if you had been working on August 31st? Yes, and I hadn't, because I had gotten the job on the 27th or the 28th of August, and that was my first day working. Did you have a car at that time? No. Which car did they come in to pick you up? My mom's car. Did Eric Menendez have a car? With him at that time? Yes. Not when they picked me up, because I live like five miles away from where I worked, so they didn't need two cars. On that night, did you see Eric Menendez's car? Um, I do not remember. Okay, do you remember seeing his car at any point during his stay at your house? Oh, yes, for sure. But you don't remember whether he had it on that particular night? I don't believe he had it there that night, but yeah. when we got home it was dark, so I don't, I don't know, I don't think it was there, but I don't remember. Now, you testified as to some phone calls that were made to your house mm -hmm. on the 0313 number. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric Menendez was a good friend of your brother's, wasn't he? Yes. And you had received calls from Eric Menendez at that number previously, had you not? Yes. And you had taken calls because it was your number as well, mm -hmm. and he would ask for Casey? Yes. And uh, during the period of time when he stayed at your house after the murders, did you receive some calls on your line? Objection, from Your Honor, Vig. From who? From Eric Menendez. You can ask a question. Yes, you want to know if he called my yes. house? Um, I don't. I don't recall if he if he called my house while he was staying at my house. Okay, during the period of time from September through March of mm -hmm. 1990 prior to the defendant being arrested. Mm -hmm. Did you receive any calls from him at that number? Um, I don't know. I, I don't remember. I don't, I don't believe that he would, anyone would call if Casey wasn't there. Casey was at Santa Barbara. Until when? Until um, he left after Christmas of his first semester there and went to Connecticut. So I don't think Eric would be calling my house while Casey was away necessarily. Was he a friend of, was the defendant a friend of yours as well? No, well, no, I wouldn't say we became friends on our own. I became friends with him because he was friends with my brother. Did your brother come back to uh, visit your family uh, in March of 1990? In March, I think, no, I don't, I think he left in the end of January for Connecticut and drove across country in May. I don't recall him being there at spring break. 
Now, in May, he came home. Uh, mm -hmm. Casey Whelan came home, is that correct? Yes. And it was during May that you and your brother went to see Eric Menendez at the jail. Yes. And do you remember what day that was? I, I believe it was, it had to be after May 21st. And why do you say that? Because Casey got home on May 21st. Do you remember what sort of notebook uh, your brother had with him on the date that you and your brother went to see Eric Menendez in jail? Objection, Your Honor. Assumes facts, not in evidence. Rephrase the question, please. Yeah. Do you, do you remember whether or not your brother had a notebook with him uh, with a pen on the date that you and your brother went to visit Eric Menendez? I don't believe he had a notebook with him. What did he have with him? His driver's license, car keys. Um, I, I, I don't remember him having any objects in his hand. Okay. Did, did you have any objects in your hand? No. Uh, the parking garage ticket in my pocket. I didn't have it in my hand. I mean. Now, when your brother wrote a note that he wanted to keep secret and he put the note up on the glass, Mm -hmm. to show to Eric Menendez. Where did he get the paper? Um, I, I don't know. There was people next to us on either side. I believe he borrowed it from someone next to him. Did he have to borrow a pen as well? Yes. Do you know who that person was next to him? No. Um, I believe the grandmother was talking to Lyle and someone else, I don't recall who was talking to Lyle. And I don't know who was to our right. So Lyle and Eric Menendez were side by side while you visited with Eric Menendez. Mm -hmm. Is that yes? Yes. Sorry. And the grandmother was talking to Lyle while you were talking, you and your brother were talking to Eric Menendez? Yes. Is that right? Now you've testified that Eric Menendez slept over your house every night that he was uh, there from when he first arrived until he left about a week after Casey left for school, is that Objection, correct? Objection, you're on a mistake for testimony. Rephrase the question, please. Well, why don't you tell us, did uh, Eric Menendez sleep over your house every night from the first night that he uh, arrived? I believe he stayed there every night that he was at my house, but I didn't check his bed at night. So you don't know where he was every single night? Would that be fair to say? Most nights I recall him being at my house, but I can't say that he was, what time he slept, or. Now you've testified on direct examination that he slept Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, mm -hmm. until Casey Casey left. left on Tuesday. Now, that wasn't quite right. There were nights that you didn't know whether he was there. Is that fair Objection to say? Objection argumentative. Rephrase the question. Would it be fair to say that you really don't know whether he was there every night? Well, well the question I answered that he stayed there Almost every night, the whole time he was there, he was there for a few days after Casey left. And after Casey left, I wasn't watching after him. I mean, my brother wasn't around to be with Eric. You had to watch after Eric Menendez? No, I'm saying we were not watching after him. Okay, he, he can come and go as he pleased, correct? Mm -hmm. He was an adult. Right. And uh, he would go out and, and uh, uh, take his car out and do whatever he wanted to do, and Casey would, would uh, do likewise. as with his own friends. Is that fair to say? Yes. And you were working yourself and uh, you didn't, uh, you weren't watching what Eric Menendez was doing, were you? I only worked that Friday of September 1st and I, I don't think I worked the other days that my brother was home. Okay, but you, fair to say that you have your own friends and you weren't babysitting mm -hmm. Eric Menendez? Yes. Do you recall receiving any phone calls from Eric Menendez from May of 1990 to the present on your 0313 number? From jail? Yes. Not that I recall. I left for boarding school though in, in July of 1990, so I wasn't there for a good portion of the time. Have you been out of the house uh, continuously since July of 1990? Yes, I just, I just graduated in June of 93. 
and I was home summers and all vacations. Well, during the summers, uh, since since this May of, of uh, 1990, that you were actually home, mm -hmm. you still had that number, that 031? No, it was cut off when I left for boarding school because Casey was Casey had left for school, and then when he returned, he just used my parents' line. Okay. So I it might have been done right when I left for boarding school, but sometime around July of 1990. <coughs> what are the last four digits of the uh, the main line to the house? Your Honor, at this point, I'm going to object that this is beyond the scope. Zero one six zero. Thank you. I have nothing further this time, Anna. Just a couple of things. Ms. Whalen, are you uh, certain that at least the, during the beginning of Eric's stay with your family, before your brother left for school, Eric indeed slept at your house each night? Yes, I'm most certain. And is, uh, is, are you less certain that he slept at your house each and every night after Casey went to Santa Barbara? Yes. Could there have been a night or, or two that he didn't sleep at your house after Casey left for Santa Barbara? It is possible. Now, the other thing is, I'm trying to understand what happened to the note after it was put in the trash so that we still have it and it didn't wind up at the dump. Well, Casey had only been gone a week, and he had left the trash basket in his room. I see. So he then retrieved it? Yes. And it was the same note that you had recalled from the jail? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Did you see your brother write a new note to produce it in court? No. Was your mother present when he, uh, in the house when he retrieved the note? I believe we were all downstairs and he got it upstairs. And uh, isn't it true that when he went and retrieved the note, I was okay, on the telephone. This is leading, Your Honor. Was, was, was I on the telephone with you and members of your family when Casey went looking for the note? Yes. And uh, did you overhear Casey saying something to me about he might still have a note? Objection calls for you Yes. And did he then hand the phone to someone else and go upstairs? Yes. And did you then see him come downstairs? Yes. And did you see the note in his hand? Yes. I've never seen it. Ms. Whalen, when your brother put the note up on the uh, glass, you didn't see the note, did you? No. He put it away from you. Yes, Eric couldn't see it. So you can't testify as to what he put up there that day, can you? Well, yes, because the note was sitting down on the... I saw him writing. You saw him write the note? I... I he... It's a small glass area. It's smaller than this. And he was in a chair, and I was standing right next to him, over him. So I... I'm, there's nothing else that he wrote. When he put this note up on the window, how did Eric Menendez respond to him? I don't recall that it was any, I mean, do you, do you want what he said exactly? Yes. You saw your brother write this note, supposedly. You saw your brother put this note up on the glass. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose you're interested to see how Eric Menendez responded. Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Overall. I believe Eric said, I mean, this is, I believe he said, but you're not, I'm not sure the witness has personal knowledge of what I, d I don't recall exactly what he said. He was on a phone, so I would have to have read his lips. Well, I would object to lip reading at this point. All right, your next question, please. Did he do anything physically? Did he, did he shrug his shoulders, or did he nod his head? Did he do anything of that nature? I think he, he, he kind of shrugged his shoulders, but I don't believe it was anything outstanding. I don't, I don't recall his reaction uh, being anything of memory. Now, you've talked to both your brother and your mother about uh, the events that occurred when Eric stayed at your house back in uh, um, late August, early September of 1989, correct? Yes. And you've discussed that uh, over the weekend? No, Casey left on Friday. You discussed it with your brother last week when he testified over the two days? I believe, yes. In fact, you came to uh, the courthouse with him, correct? Yes. And you were with your mother as well? Yes. And you've had discussions uh, with your brother about what occurred during that period of time, is that correct? Yes. Discussed the case? We discussed what happened. 
What do you mean by that? Your Honor, I'm going to object that this point is beyond the scope of redirect. Overall. We discussed what happened when Eric was there okay. at our house. And were there things that you filled in and things that uh, the other members of your family filled in that you couldn't remember? Um, I actually have the best memory out of everyone. And I remembered where we ate dinner. I, re I remembered most things. Do you remember ever going out to dinner with Eric Menendez and your mother and Casey during any of those other days that Eric uh, Menendez spent at your house during that period of time? No. Never went to dinner again? I don't, I don't recall us, all four of us being out together again. What happened the next day? Your Honor, I'm going to object. This is beyond the scope of redirect. Your Honor, may we approach? Yes. Thank you. First night you had indicated uh, that Eric Menendez stayed over at your house, that you went to dinner, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And it was with three, uh, two other members of your family? Yes. Did you come home to your house after dinner? I believe so, yes. You believe so? I, 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 I don't recall going anywhere else besides home. Okay. That night, did uh, your brother or Eric Menendez go anywhere? Not to my knowledge. You don't recall? No. The next night, or the next day, what do you remember about that day? I, I, I believe, I, I don't recall. I don't recall anything specific about okay. that day. The, f the next day after that, what do you recall? Nothing. How about the following day? I believe that we went and did things to get my brother ready for school. When you say we did things, who are you referring to? My mom and I and my brother. And Eric Menendez was not with you? I don't recall. <coughs> and the next day, what happened? If I believe that was Tuesday and Casey left. Okay, you remember that? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, yes. Is that that's yes? Uh, after Casey left, what do you remember about Eric Menendez being at your house? Um, I remember during the days he, he played tennis. I remember one day specifically when he had just gotten back from playing tennis. Was uh, that the day after Casey left? It could have been. It could have been the following day. All right, the next day. This is two days after Casey left. What happened? I, I don't recall for sure. Right. I don't, I didn't. And the third day? No. And the fourth? No. The fifth? I, I, I don't, I mean, it was four years ago. I don't remember exactly what I did. Do you remember what Eric Menendez was doing during that period of time? I, I don't know what he did every minute of the day, no. Is your memory pretty vague as to what occurred during that period of time? I, I assume so, but I, I, I didn't stop to write it down, what I was doing. Now, during this period of time, did you see Craig Signorelli? Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope. No. Did You never saw him at your house? No. Not while I was home. And you were home most of the time? No, not necessarily. I remember. I recall my mother telling me that he'd come by, but I did not see him myself. Thank you. I have nothing further this time. No, Your Honor.